Welcome in to a Tuesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here from the undisclosed location, driven and powered every day by Go Chevrolet. Remember, they're online at G-E-A-U-X Chevrolet.com. Give them a, uh, they are on uh, Florida Boulevard and Sherwood Forest, the newest used car lot. Go Express Auto Sales are online at GoChevrolet.com. Any of the inventory you're looking at down in Laplace, you can find in Baton Rouge. So get in touch with Lee Carney, Nick Richard, and the crew. We're also brought to you de- uh, daily by uh, Majestic Coffee. Our coffee is locally brewed down here in South Louisiana. Find out for yourself how you get it online at deliciousips.com. All of our guests today, and we're jam-packed. We'll talk to Hunt Palmer. We will talk to Tom Hart. We will talk to Chris Reed. And we will talk to Peter Kuig here today on the Jordy Colada Show. Peter Kuig is a regular Ted Lasso, as he is an American coaching soccer over in Europe. He's got great stories. He is, as I said, a South Louisiana native. I grew up with his brother. Uh, he is very much the vibe of the Jordy Collada. Yes, show. we're all going to learn together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, also, this morning we will talk to Chris Reed, uh, former LSU baseball player and very outspoken here in his uh, post career about the program and, of course, LSU baseball looking for a head coach right now. We'll get his thoughts on who could possibly be next and what he would be looking for. Lots of debate on how you make Alec Box Stadium better, mm. as uh, our guy Jack is uh, is here today. Got the transmission fixed. No, he hasn't oh. yet. <laughs> he's, he's, bought, he's stealing his roommate's car. I thought I thought the, <laughs> I thought something was going on. I saw the plates yesterday were from like New Jersey, California, California. California. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was like, Californication, baby. Who's what here? is going on, man? What is going on? Maybe you need to take it over to Go Chevrolet Used Cars. I told yeah. him he could get a spark, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, a little, little loner spark, dude. So they can't they, they they can't figure it out at the Wiener Schnitzel what's going on with the transmission. <laughs> I'm so confused about that. This place I've been to, it's like right past the Wiener Schnitzel. Rule number one, like AAA brought it past. I'm like, oh please don't tell me we're going past the Wiener Schnitzel. Please don't tell me we're going past the Wiener Schnitzel. Went past the Wiener Schnitzel, pull into the place. There's like a junkyard dog sitting on Highland, and it crosses the road. It dodges yeah. a cars Absolutely. every single time. I know exactly I, was, I know which one you're talking about. You know the dog? Yeah. <laughs> you know I, know the dog. The, I know the spots know you're dog. talking about. Been yeah, there yeah, for yeah, 25 yeah. years, that I dog. I swear to God. They, the old Texaco. They opened up my car and the dude was smoking the cig in there. Was it a cig? Yeah, smoking a cig in you my sure car. sure it was a cig? <laughs> yeah. A little yeah, spice in there. Though. I don't know what was in there. But uh, there's a problem with my transmit. There's just like a piece wrong with it. And like, oh, we don't do pieces. We just do, <laughs> we, we do, we do the whole transmission. That'll be $800. Like, what? You just can't do the piece? You have to do the whole thing? We, we don't, don't make do keys, here, dude. We, do, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we go for the long ball. We always scare the shit out of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Like, oh, we can't fix your key. We just tell you a new car. We're not taking just a little bit of your money. We're taking all, all of your it. money, man. Yeah, so. You know where you are, son? <laughs> yeah, right. You passed the wiener schnitzel. What do you expect? Yeah. That's rule number one. Don't go past the wiener schnitzel. It really is. At any time. Um, unless you're looking for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll talk to... Uh, as, uh, Jack, was, we were talking with uh, Jack. What we were talking about? Oh, how to oh, fix the, Alex's uh, box. Yeah, the upgrades to Alex's box. <laughs> and the interaction that that post got uh, yesterday uh, over at LSU Barstool. But then uh, it's also been a debate that we've talked about a lot. And Chris Reed, if you saw yesterday, he put on social media one of his first orders of business if he was the new LSU head ba- uh, baseball coach is that he would walk into the administration and demand upgrades to Alec Box Stadium. Not as so much of uh, any type of uh, benefit or advantage, like a weight room or no, you know, no, no. nothing like that, just to make it more homey. Yeah, the environment, to, to, to give it a, an upgrade. And, when was it um, redone, upgraded, whatever the last renovation? 2009 is when So that's not a long this, time ago. No. It's a really well, great the, this stadium. State, it's, a, it's a fantastic stadium. What are they looking stadium. for? It needs to be more college. It needs, it to, needs, be to, it needs to be fun. It's just no fun. fun. It's yeah. stuffy. I mean, did you watch the regionals? It was unreal. You got the new kids on the block, and we're just going this way. They're going that way, and you see how fun it is. And then we're just a morgue. I mean, Tennessee is absolutely stuffing us into lockers. Like, we were we were the nerds. Yeah. After, when you see, like, what their environment is, and they are being, they get to run, like, that whole roost of being like, oh, let's make it nasty. And they're just absolutely playing into being the heel. And unless she's being like, oh, we're still... Like the the nice environment, like we're like the very much a homey LSU feel, and they're like, no nerd, shoved us out real quick. LSU feels commercial. It does. It LSU feels, too feels major very league. corporate. LSU feels 
Um, who would have thought that would be safe? Very LSU's boring. corporate. Yeah, it is. I mean, who, who would have thought you would have said that, especially in baseball, uh, just because of the environment that was created. That was Alec Box Stadium in the early days. I mean, we're always talking about the past of LSU baseball. That is what Alec Box Stadium looked like this weekend in Knoxville, with people standing outside, but that's with people the going fans, crazy. Right? So why will that make a difference to change like the setup of the stadium? Because... The way that the ballpark is built Mm -hmm. is going to create your environment. Yeah. LSU baseball is going to have fans there. A lot of those fans are the same ones that grew up at the old box. But at the old box, you were on top of the field. Okay. You were sitting next to each other. There weren't too many places to Hide. walk around and How much was get out of the stadium. $9. Not, $9. Dude, right. you but if you wanted a beer, you just walked out to your tailgate. You could walk right back into the game oh. if you had a ticket. I mean, it was very much a down-home feel, right? I mean, it was a home field environment. Mm-hmm. Um, now I mean, it, it feels very it feels very stuffy. It feels very corporate. It feels very commercial. There's a lot of suits. Security's got to go. Uh, the security's a problem. I mean, not as far as securing. They're too good at the, their job. Yeah, they, they, well, they take <laughs> their job too serious. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be some type of protocol in allowing the fans to experience the game and have a good in-game experience compared to securing the environment, right? I mean, like, as a security guard, just make sure I don't get punched in the face. I don't need you to tell me to sit down and put my mask on every time. You know what I mean? That, 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 I'm, that, that I'm, I'm standing up. Um, and that, that was a problem during the basketball season. I mean, I was telling Will Wade, I know that you can't have anybody in this arena, but the people that are in the arena are totally turned off by the security guards. Because you go in there, and if you stand up to say anything or you put your mask to your nose, you're almost getting rushed. Accosted. I mean, it's like they're they're coming after you. Uh, and, you know, it gets to a point where you're like, I'll just stay home. I mean, like. This isn't a funny yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, I'll, just, I'll just hang back. Um, Were there problems that led to that? Like, what, what is the deal COVID. with that? That's yeah. it? Well, I don't, I don't know in particular when, when that started. Um, because last year you could have so much access to talking to fans, like in that type of environment as a security guard. I mean, it was more like these one-on-one conversations rather than like speaking to a group, like, Hey, watch out up there. I mean, they were speaking Mm one-on-one to people saying, sit down, put your mask on. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, well, I was alone. Yeah. I was posting tons of videos like early in the season. Right field was good when we could let fans in. they were giving it to the right fielder. And I would always post it on the barstool account. And we get really, really big. A lot of people would repost it. And so what LSU baseball and the security started doing was they were giving out these cards of, like, things you couldn't say. And if you said them, you'd get kicked out. I mean, no are way. you kidding me? A library. Like, come on. Are you <laughs> kidding me? That's bizarre. I mean, it is. But know you know that. what? I mean, that's not a security guard. That's not your job, right? Yeah. No. They, 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 that'd be free but speech. what I'm saying is, is that that's not the security guards that are administering those rules. You know what I mean? It's right. not like the security guards are meeting before the game saying, hey, look, I printed out these do not say words. <laughs> yep, if you hear I'll, I'll them, listen. hand them in. I mean, somebody from LSU is directing them to do that, and whoever is doing that is bad at your job. I mean, that is a terrible protocol to start to try and, and, and initiate. I mean, what, what what are we trying to do here? And it comes to the- And then you want to look at a weekend like Tennessee and ask, well, I mean, like, look at that place compared to LSU. Well, yeah. I mean... They're, they're allowing them to be fans. They're allowing them to enjoy the atmosphere. I think first and foremost, there has to be a, a, a shift in mentality of what do you want to create? What, do, what, what are you trying to create? Because if you're going for this high-dollar, sweet-level, executive-level... Major League Baseball feel. feel yeah, like you you crushed it. You've, I mean, that, that, that's what they've created. Um, but if you're looking to get to a home field advantage... Somewhere that people are uh, intimidated to come down and play in front of. That was, look, I I believe that the Intimidator got its nickname because of the setting that it was in at Alec Box Stadium. Not because of of the billboard. It was the fact that the billboard sat on a, a, a raucous field that was the number one home field advantage in college baseball for 20 plus years. And now... Alec Box Stadium, after watching Duty Noble last night, after watching Tennessee's environment over the weekend, after watching that Arkansas environment last weekend, um, 
I don't even have the box in the top 10 in, in the SEC. I mean, in the top five of the SEC. I mean, it's just, it has fallen so far behind as far as becoming or, or uh, being able to be a home field advantage. It just doesn't even seem that way. Now, I think that you could make a couple of, of, of changes where you knock a couple of the bleachers out, give some students an opportunity to walk up, build one of those, those, those hills. Um, hills or burns like you have at the softball park. I mean, the, 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 the softball it's park awesome. is awesome. The, the way that it's built, the entertainment, uh, the in-game entertainment, the, 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 the entire environment is, is very enjoyable. Um, as far as like a family out atmosphere, you want to bring somebody out there and just let your kids run and, um, you know, enjoy a, a sunny, hot day. Uh, the softball park, in my opinion, is great entertainment. The box has fell so far behind um, that I, I believe it should be. Um, it, it should be one of the first orders of business of the new head coach when he steps in. Now, there is a lot of discussion over the last 24 hours that the new coach is going to be Mike Bianco. Um, there are reports out there. Uh, I have seen Glenn Gilbo at The Advertiser. I have seen The Advocate reporting that the names that this job is down to is Cliff Godwin at East Carolina and Mike Bianco at Ole Miss uh, with uh, Gilbo at The Advertiser uh, reporting that one of his sources saying that LSU and Bianco – uh, are closing in on a, a contract. Um, we we have given our uh, we have given our thoughts on on that potential hire, and, and while it it feels like a very safe hire, uh, in my opinion, it is not what this job calls for presently. Now, once that is potentially made I think you have to you have to ride with Mike Bianco right because he's going to be the guy um, but as far as a lot of the stuff that we're talking about and shifting the mentality getting to a a a a young man's mind of recruiting a, a an environment that is built uh, on a very young hungry up-and-coming program uh, that's not going to be it it's going to be a lot of the same uh, that, that you feel around LSU baseball now. Uh, and not necessarily that, that that's a bad thing, um, but it, it seems like uh, from all signs that we've talked to, people that we've talked to, uh, that Mike Bianco right now is, is set to become the next head baseball coach at LSU. Is that a little surprising to you, considering what, like we've talked about on the show plenty of times, that Scott Woodward, like you said, is a big game hunter and that he would go out and get somebody that's an absolute splash. And it seems like Bianco is the safe, the safest and easy. Like, you could, you could call him yesterday. Yeah, you no. could call him, you know. You could call him a month. Yeah, you could call him halfway through the year and he would come. Uh, yes, it is surprising to me. Um, but I also know that, you know, Scott Woodward being the big game hunter that he is, he has hunted the big game. And uh, from all reports, he has not been able to – uh, bring them in because he just can't get clearance from up top. And, um, you know, I think at, at some point, you know, if you're that decision maker, you just say, okay, what what, what are you guys looking Why'd for? Why'd you bring me here? Yeah, what are you looking for? Uh, and, and the guy that checks all the boxes and is the one that, you know, can get past the board of supervisors is Mike Bianco. Is there, like, a deadline? Like, why the need to do it so quickly? Like, why can't they recruiting? look longer? That's it? Yeah. I mean, you just can't let recruiting linger. Um, and you can't let the job be open, especially when you're recruiting against teams like Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Tennessee, teams that are going to be out there and they're going to be doing it and don't think that they're not telling the same kids that you're recruiting. They don't even have a coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know what direction they're going in. Um, and, you know, I mean, that stuff's real. You know I mean? that that's That's – stuff that they're caring about, and that's what they are, are pushing to make sure that they get this thing done in a timely manner. Um, so, you know, look, there, there's nothing official. It seems like all the signs are pointing towards Bianco. Um, are we getting smoke screened again? It could be. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be a Scott Woodward special. You know, I mean, that could be something that, that, that he, is, uh, he is intently doing, is trying to put up the, 
the, the, the screen of, of Bianco and, and some of the other names that continue to, to leak out and come out. And maybe he's working all the way over here and not paying attention to anything that's going on uh, of what people are talking about. Because when you think about the two people that have been floated out there in terms of, like, Pat Casey was the hire. You know, it was he was the leading candidate, and that's he's a pulmonary guy. Aren't they, aren't they friends? And they go back a ways. So you could almost set that up to make where Paul Casey's – or Pat Casey's good with the idea of it because it's like, I'll help you out a little bit, Paul, in this transition. And then Bianco's an LSU guy, so he could also be playing the game with him. Like, hey, I'll, I'll kind of play the – you can float my name out there. I'm not leaving. But it, if that helps you get business done, I don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but it seems like it could be. I, I have said this. If Mike Bianco goes to LSU and Ole Miss replaces Bianco with Cliff Godwin. I was just going to ask why I, I would go with him over Bianco. Ole, Ole Miss would win that scenario. I mean, you have opened up a job for one of your rivals to upgrade, and you have stayed. You stayed, pre- stayed probably, Pat. You probably stayed where you are. I mean, as far as the, the, the trade for Paul Maneri at, at where he was in his career and, and replacing him with Mike Bianco after 21 years at a SEC Western Division school and bringing him in, I mean, you're staying right around where you are. You may be a click or two better in certain areas, but for the most part, it's not enough to see it doesn't move the needle. It doesn't move yeah, that's at what all. I was going to ask, what's the benefit at all? The only thing, safe. The only all thing I can think of is not only that it's benefit. safe, it's that I think that if you have any saving grace, we talk about Alex Box and how it used to be, he would bring that nostalgia back. A lot of Jerry DiNardo, like, you know, bring the magic back yeah. to a stadium. He understands how LSU baseball used to be. So that would be the one thing he could come in here and kind of shake the environment up and bring it back to – Hold the rope, nineties nostalgia. That is scary. You're chasing the dragon. Yeah, you're yeah. Not, I know, I know. Just I'm just, I'm trying to find a positive yeah, here. You're I want not, to, I want to come on the show. Jesus, <laughs> you're <laughs> not, <laughs> you're not gonna recreate 1990s around here. Right. You're not gonna recreate who LSU baseball is and where they're coming from. I think that has to be understood in this job, and you've got to stop chasing ghosts because it's not gonna happen. If you're looking to recreate Alec Box Stadium of the nineties in 2021 it ain't happening you got to find the best version of 2021's alec box stadium and create a home field environment there it's never going to be alec box stadium like the one was on skip bertman drive it was built different Mm -hmm. it was built like a cracker box it was just a a a college baseball park (laughs) built for a a program that had really no thought on ever winning they just made sure and built the complex to say they had the complex. They have a place to play. Yeah. I mean, when you watch the early days of Bertman getting here, he talks all about having to paint the dugout and cut the grass and do, build a fence. I mean, do everything that really you needed to, to create a baseball environment. You don't have that problem anymore. You've got a palace. As far as Alec Box Stadium goes on baseball essentials, it's – Checks all the boxes. Really uncopped. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not a comp out there, you know, outlying the the, the, the big ones, the duty nobles of the world and, and some of these these high-end stadiums that can really provide this type of advantages that, that the box does for the player. I mean, the, the, the player, once he gets into the locker room, the batting cages, the weight room, the film room, the meeting room, all of that stuff, it's like he's at a Major League Baseball park. Yeah, minor league baseball would be a step down. It is. I mean, when Bregman went to the minors, he was flying first class at LSU when he went to a bus, went to a Greyhound bus. I mean, he'll tell you that. He'd show up to LSU on a big SEC weekend, and the locker room would be catered by all types of five-star restaurants in town. And the next year, he's playing for the the – the, the Waco hooks or whoever it was. Down Extra there. mayonnaise on my sandwich yeah, would be right. a luxury. They're, they're, warm they're, Subway sandwich. they're making foldovers. <laughs> you know, making rollovers in the locker room. I mean, they're, they're handing them like cereal in the box and, 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 and no milk. bag milk. <laughs> Make it work. See you on the bus. You know, I mean, it just, um, times have changed. LSU is not, it, it feels like they're, they're, they're chasing this, this ghost in baseball where you got to bring back the people and, and and try to find this formula where just look around and 
advance. Just look around and and be able to to say, hey, look, man, the past is the past of LSU baseball. You'll never be able to catch it, recreate it, or um, you know, bring that to life again. But how can you step into the 2021 stratosphere of the, the most competitive baseball group out there. How do you get into the discussions of the Arkansas, the Vanderbilt, the teams that are routinely now, when you think about college baseball in this era, that are competitive? And going out and hiring a, a, a coach that really has no success as far as the game is concerned on the wall. He's got... He has run an incredible program at Ole Miss as far as the respectability of that. A lot like Paul Maneri. The comparison, I would say, is a lot like Paul Maneri. You're not going to meet, you're never going to meet anybody out there that probably has anything too bad to say about Bianco. I mean, he is a fantastic dude. For sure. Is a great family man. Is a, a guy that really cares about his players and program. Does it the right way. It's easy to see that. It's easy to respect what Mike Bianco does and have, I think, all of us from an LSU standpoint in watching him from, from afar. He's an LSU guy. He, he emulates Skip a lot. He's somebody that really tried to build his program after the things that he saw at LSU. Easy to pull for, right? But hiring him 21 years later after that stop in Oxford... And expecting him to to light this wick on on the past of LSU baseball and just have it just pop to life, I think is very unfair to him. I think it's 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 irresponsible to to the executives that either applied pressure or or pointed Scott Woodward in that direction to make that happen. And you know, I, I think once you get settled in, there, there will be positives to having Mike Bianco on the job. Mm -hmm. um, but with it being open and the options that are out there, I think it's very an, uh, a very underwhelming choice. I think you made a great point yesterday. It kind of seemed like a stretch at first. You're like uh, Anthony Edwards, the kid at Georgia, and they're asking about Alex Gregory. Gets like, who? I don't <laughs> care. But think about it. The, when you, the kids were 19 right now, it's all about them, kind of, and just building your own brand. And they're just looking who's the, who's the hot, like who's hot right now. No doubt about it. I don't it. care if you were good in the '90s. I, that's just the truth. It is right now. Mm -hmm. That's one hundred percent what it is. And I mean, I think when 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 you see that Anthony Edwards example, it brings it to light real quick. I mean, that's a that's a that's a that's a new age athlete, the number one pick in the NBA draft. A guy that, you know, I mean, was was probably nine or ten years old when A-Rod quit playing. And A-Rod was A-Rod. You know what I mean? You're probably at, at nine, ten. My, my son right now is ten years old. He's in his sports watching prime, right? Like, yeah. he knows more about the memory. NBA. He knows more about all these prospects than I'll ever know at this point in my life. Just because he's so Locked in, in it. loves it so much. Right? And Anthony Edwards coming from that point in his life, he don't even know who Alex Rodriguez is, <laughs> nor does he give a damn. You know what I mean? Scary. I mean, think about, I mean, the follow-up question was, it was J-Lo's boyfriend. And he's like, huh? Don't know who that is you either. Know, like, <laughs> what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And would you say that's kind of what, maybe what the Board of Supervisors is doing? Like, they know, they feel like they're playing this game where they're hiring somebody that they can, res like, that they relate to and they respect. <sighs> And it's just like an, it's old guard still. It's yeah. they're pulling people that they remember from their time of watching LSU baseball as opposed to almost a little bit of forward thinking and making a new move. Yeah, it feels very LSU. It Which feels it very does. 1999. Maybe it wasn't Joe Oliva's fault. Dude, you know, maybe this BOS. <laughs> LSU. Um, the right people the to sense, make upset. In the sense of um, just play it safe. You know what I mean? Just, Just don't. Don't try and, Get our guys and piss too many people off. Yes, we really have is the been problem. It safe. Paul Maneri is the definition of vanilla. That was just the most safe sports program in all of sports. I never heard one bad thing about LSU baseball. I didn't know Bianco turned the job down in 06. Really? I didn't know they had an opportunity. I think you just broke some little news. I didn't know uh, that either. No. I mean, there was some stuff. I, I was talking to some, but I mean, I think it's pretty well known that, that um, or at least within the LSU community, 
that Bertman offered the job to Bianco in 06. And wow. he went back and forth on it, and he ended up giving the job to Benary. You know, I mean, at that time... Bianco saying no to Skip is wild. Wild. His catcher, his guy. I mean... We're doing this together. The LSU job. I mean, when, and, and, and at that point, it was a lifeline from LSU. Kind of like, hey, we need somebody in here to stabilize this thing. You know, like bring Come it right back. the ship. Yes. I mean, you want to talk about chasing the ghost in 06. You think you're chasing a ghost in 2021. Think about it in 06 when smoke was gone. And they were still looking for days of, you know, the 90s. They were trying to, to, to recreate Gorilla Ball and, and rip all five in a decade. Um, That's probably what Bianca was thinking. He's like, Skip, are you nuts? I'm not coming in after, after Smoke. I wouldn't even call Smoke's tenure a failure, but anything that after, happened after yeah. Skip was nothing was good. Nothing, yeah, good, skip nothing good could have come from that. And then he's like, Bianca, like, you want it? It's like, no, dude, I just saw Smoke <laughs> Laval get eaten alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Falaya Real Estate. Remember, online at falaya.com. Get in touch with Barrett Blondo and the crew over at Falaya Real Estate where they can help you sell your house by yourself and save thousands. Uh, For more information, falaya.com or download the app on Google Play or the Apple Store today. You can call Barrett Blondo, who's been a longtime friend of mine, at 225-939-6153. 225-939-6153. Look, it's no secret that things are changing in the way that things are operated and the way that things are handled. That is true for real estate as well. Get in touch with Falaya.com or get in touch with Falaya online at Falaya.com. They offer virtual tours, push-button offers, uh, and they are redefining how real estate is sold. Find out today online at Falaya.com. We'll come back and talk about it with Hunt Palmer of the LSU Sports Radio Network. Get his thoughts Oh my God! Wow. All timer, puberty, man. <laughs> get his thoughts on. We're gonna get Ricola back on the horn. On the week, yeah. You got any, you got any more of those? I'm, I've been holding a call yeah. for like ten minutes. Please go to commercial break. Uh, we'll be back with Hunt Barmer next. We're not going to. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yes. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more.
Welcome back in here to this Tuesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show presented by Go Chevrolet. Remember, check out Advanta Clean. If you've got water, fire, or mold damage around your house or office, get in touch with Bradley Lynch over at Advanta Clean. AD AC help? A-D-V-A-N-T-A. <laughs> AdvantaClean.com. Yeah, water, fire, or mold. Get in touch with Bradley Lynch. Yes, at some point we will talk to a AC HVAC company here. Like we're begging now. If you want, uh, <laughs> if you want to help us, if you want promotion, for God's sakes, get in touch with the Jordy Colada <laughs> My show. My God, you'll be Headless everywhere. Promotion. AC, get us some cool it at least summer night. These summer days, man, are gonna be brutal. Uh, Hunt sweat. Palmer, who is with us every Tuesday, he's a part of the LSU Sports Radio Network, and uh, you can catch him on the Jordy Colada show weekly here. Uh, good morning. How are you, man? Doing good. How are y'all? We're doing all right. Uh, wrap up last weekend for LSU baseball for me. Yeah, I think that was probably the end of the line for them. I mean, Tennessee just kind of outclassed them. I mean, they played as, as tough as they could on Saturday and hung in there and had a chance to tie it late. Um, and then when you know when your ace March though just doesn't have anything left in the tank because of what he had to do in the regional weekend to get out of there, it just you were just kind of out of bullets. I would like to see Devin and Font though in there earlier. And not have your season, you know, shrivel, wibble away with, with Will Helmers out on the mound. But they were just kind of out of bullets. And Tennessee was better. They were playing with more edge, and they and they just beat them. Um, you know, it was a, a heck of a push there from you know, where they were and the, the, the hole that they dug to get back and to get into the, the tournament and to go up to Eugene and win the reason like they did was was impressive and fun and it kept things alive for another year. But realistically, they had kind of they had kind of run out of the gas. Uh, Hunt, you have been uh, you've been one of the biggest LSU baseball fan supporters that I have ever met, and a lot of that happened, uh, or the majority of that happened uh, during the pulmonary run. Um, fr- from your point of view, can can you uh, summarize what what you've seen from the last fifteen years and what the legacy will be of pulmonary? Yeah, you know, for me, I think that there's uh, a feeling within LSU fans, um, and some of it is you know. Is, is founded in some truth, but it's not all the truth. You can't just roll out of bed and win championships at LSU in baseball. And you can look across the street at the football program and say, yeah, the last three guys who have been the football coach have won national championships. And two of the last three guys to do it in baseball have won national championships. And it sounds a lot easier than it is. It, it's really not. You've got, you've got to be a really good coach. You've got advantages and you've got, you know, some would say a stack deck, but you can't just snap your fingers and make it happen. You've got to do a good job. And, and Paul Maneri from 09 through 17 did a really, really, really good job. And you can throw six national seeds up there. You've got teams, obviously a team in 2009 that was good enough to win the whole thing. 2013 was as good a team as there was in the country. 2015 was an exceptional team. 17 obviously got two out of the way. He's consistently, every two or three years, putting a team out there that's got a real chance to win the national championship. And that's that's the measure of it. Sometimes you, know, you go out there and Brightman kicks the ground ball and you know bar hits two to the track and you just you just don't get it done up there. Sometimes Coastal comes in here and hits, hits four home runs off Alex Lang for the first time in his career and that it just it doesn't work out for you. But sometimes DJ LeMayu hits a two out you know, double down the line to tie the game and you, know, you hit a bunch of home runs in, in game three and you win the national championship. But his 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 job was to put a team out there that could that had a real chance, and and for that eight or nine years, they were right in the mix of it. And then the last three or four, the, the, the level dropped off a little bit. There's there's no doubt about it. But I, I think that the program in 2007 when he came on to start um, was not in very good shape. He changed that immediately and and went on a great run. And so the next coach will have a, a lot of work to do to do as well as Paul Maneri did for that that part of it. But you know, like I said, it's certainly a job that gives you every opportunity. I heard this yesterday, and you would know better than I. I, I don't know if this was if this was public knowledge or if this is even true to to, to this degree. Do you know if, if Mike Bianco was offered the job in two thousand and six? I don't know if he was or not. What I can tell you is that he wasn't wild about jumping. Even even though smoke was there, jumping right into Skip's shadow. Mm-hmm. I think that was just that's a tough spot. And, you know, I think he would have done a pretty good job, um, just like he's done a pretty good job at Ole Miss. 
but I think that there was he just got so much respect for Skip and, and so much respect for the program that he just don't know that he wanted to jump right into the fire like that. What do you make of the vacancy right now, and and what is LSU? Uh, what what is the status of LSU job today, twenty twenty one? I I I'd imagine there's a ton of nostalgia around it, but as far as the presentation goes today, uh, how do you view this seat? It's really good. Um, you've got an administration that's willing to help. You've got a fan base that cares a ton. Uh, you've got a lot of money in the conference that you're in. And it's not as if the success of the program is just like you know, 30 years in the rearview mirror. This ain't Nebraska football. I mean, LSU was right there knocking on the door of this thing you know, four seasons ago. Um, and you're still getting guys like Dylan Cruz from Florida who want to come play for LSU, who could go anywhere they want, including take money and go play pro ball. Um, so it's it's still a really good job. Um, Tox is a nice little feather in the cap. And if you, if you work hard and put your mind into recruiting, you can field a roster that's as good as anybody's here. And, and it's, there are you know, some aspects of it. And, you know, I've, I've heard you all talking about it. It's, it's pretty obvious when you watch you know, on TV the last couple of weekends. The box is not what Baum is from, from an atmosphere perspective in Fayetteville. It's not what Starkville is from an atmosphere perspective. Now, that said, that's all fan experience. In terms of what the players have, in, in their training facilities, in their locker room, their players' lounge, their video room set up, the ability for them to go and, and, and that indoor hitting facility and, and the, the locker room that they've built for the pros who play at LSU who come back before spring training and work out, all of that is first class. So that's something to recruit to. They just, they've got potentially some things to maybe work out from a fan perspective, but it's, it's a really, really good job. It's 100% top five, I think top two or three. Uh, job in the country, and and I think they'll they'll get somebody in here that's got a really good chance to win. What changes would you make to the box to upgrade the atmosphere or environment? I, I just think having a bunch of bleachers out in the outfield is not great. I mean, that's just that that's not what most the, the places that are building stadiums are doing. And, and some of it, look, I mean, you know. Baum's got a big berm out there in left field that you can make work. Ole Miss is built into a little you know, valley where you've got you know, natural topography to put you know, sit folding chairs and create that atmosphere. Uh, you know, at, at South Carolina, they put chair backs in the outfield, which is a better viewing experience. It's, it's a tougher battle than it was in, in the 90s. When it, look, in the 90s, if you wanted to watch LSU baseball, you had to go to the game to watch mm-hmm. baseball. Now that's not the case. I can sit on the golf course and pull the game up on my phone on a Bluetooth speaker. I can get out on a boat fishing or whatever I want to do and put the game on my phone and, and watch it. You can stream it from your from your recliner if you want to do it and, and, and have access to your bathroom. Your, it's the same thing we talk about in football. But in football, you've got seven of these a year. In baseball, you've got 35, 38 of them. And so t- the days of just piling – 9,000 in there for every SEC game are just not not going to be the case. They're just, there's It's too easy to access. So you've got to create a little bit better viewing experience for the fans. Um, I think that obviously the SEC allowing schools to sell alcohol is going to help some things, but in terms of you got to get a little better, more comfortable seat out there in the outfield and those bleachers, it's hot out there at the end, it's freezing cold at the beginning. So it, it's a little bit more of an uphill battle, but they've got to do something, I think, with the outfield season. Uh, I am hearing routinely two names for this job, and Mike Bianco and Cliff Godwin. Are, are you hearing those two names? Are you hearing anybody else? And would you be surprised if it was anybody outside of those two selections? Probably a little bit. I thought, for, since I heard that this is going to be it for Paul, um, I've always thought, based on what I watched at Texas, a couple of years ago, where they got all that money and they've got a ton of history of success. And it's a great job, a lot of advantages. And they took a swing at all of these guys, and everybody said no. And they ended up with Tulane's coach, who would never want to read it. Now, they're the number two national seed this year and headed to Omaha, and it appears have done a great job. Um, but it's just it's this pie in the sky thing where, where if you're a, a big time program, which LSU certainly is, you think you can just you know, grab whoever you want and he's yours. It generally doesn't work out that way. I have thought from the start that this job would eventually be, from from the time I heard Paul Monet was done, that it would be Cliff Godwin's job. Um, I thought that was a guy that would definitely take it. 
I thought that's a guy who's had a ton of success. He's been to three super regionals in six years at ECU. Uh, that's 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 not one good team. Wow, you get the job. That's I sustained a program that's consistently good and competing uh, with the elites of college baseball. I'm I'm right there in the Sweet 16 half the time at East Carolina, uh, which is impressive. And so I, when he's been here, obviously been at, at Ole Miss. He's been a head coach. He's had success. He's recruited. I, 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 the other thing I like is that he's young-ish, and he still hasn't reached any sort of pinnacle in the sport. So he's going to be hungry to make it happen. This will be his big shot. And so I think that that's the guy that I like, but we'll see. Um, Mike Bianco seems like he's the leader in the clubhouse and the sentimental favorite for a lot of the, the LSU baseball fraternity members. How do you feel about Bianco as the leader? You know, um, I think if Mike Bianco gets the job, he will do a good job. I, I don't I don't think there's any chance of the bottom falling out of it if he's the head coach at LSU. He knows how to run a program. He'd have a little bit extra scholarship money to toss around with top. Um, he'd be recruiting a lot of the same players, um, you know, going over to the you – know, and I think that he would be motivated to come back where he started his coaching and playing career – and try to get to Omaha, which he's only done once, and try to win a national championship. So I don't think he would have any chance of mailing it in. Um, but I, I, um, I just like the upside maybe of Godwin a little bit more. I think that Bianco is a statistical outlier with as many good teams to great teams as he's had that haven't gotten it done uh, in, in super regional play. Why is that? I, I think, what, what, what well, is I just I don't. It's hard for me to understand or try to form a rational argument as to why you can put together a team that can win eighteen or nineteen SEC games, but they're not good in a super regional like that. that you just your team just didn't play well, and you can point to this. And he started his closer in Game Three uh, yesterday and or two days ago, and you can say that that was that's a mistake. You got to, but is it really? I mean, is it a, is it just some gross miscalculation? I don't. I don't necessarily believe that. I just think he's statistically gotten unlucky. His guys just haven't made, haven't played as well as they could, and as 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 good as the talent he collected was. And I really do believe that there's a, an element of chance in that. I think you know, what Skip did is just remarkably uh, excellent, and it's fortunate in a lot of you know. Warren Morris could have rolled over to first base. Wouldn't have been that. It's it just. Um, I just think he he. Hasn't necessarily had as good of teams as maybe some of LSU's teams or some of these Vanderbilt teams, for sure. But I think that he's had team. He, he should have been to Omaha four or five times by now. What's the emphasis on time here? Well, I don't. It's not an emphasis if, if the guy that you want is still coaching for some reason. Then I'm not going to rush to the podium to try to beat that by ten days. It's like I'm not going to do that. But if you if you got the guy you want get the contract done and, and get him out on the recruiting trail and get him talking to some of these guys who, you know, you may need to come back for another year. Um, so do it when the guy's available and you know who you want it, do it now. But it don't, don't rush because you haven't spoken to somebody on your list because we're talking about hopefully 10, 12, 15 more years of, of this in your program. I'm not going to rush 10 days for that. Is there anybody still coaching that, that you're interested in? Well, I guess as I, I mean, you know, if Tim Corbin wants to talk, yeah, I'd love to talk to him. Um, so I, I'm just, you know, just pulling out names of guys that are that are going up there to play in the College World Series. So um, any you know, love I don't for think the Pies David Pierce is realistic. Come in. Any love for the Italian? <laughs> Who are we talking about? Joey V. <laughs> oh, I tell him. Um, yeah, if, that, if that's the guy you want to talk to, absolutely. I, I think he's done a really good job. I think if you give that guy the resources in, in, in Baton Rouge and the commitment to the program that they've already got in Baton Rouge, that he's making sure that they they do on Rocky Top now, uh, he would have a, a lot of success in Baton Rouge, and I would love to talk to him. So, yeah, that guy, would, that would fit. Uh, have a safe trip to New Orleans, bro. Good to talk to you. Uh, do you think by the next time we talk that this job is filled? I do. I think that's, I think that's pretty likely. Uh, we'll talk soon, man. Thank you. Bye, Jordy. Thanks. Hunt Palmer checking in this morning just like he does every Tuesday, uh, giving his thoughts on this LSU opening as it feels like it's two names that continuously are being discussed in Cliff Godwin 
and Mike Bianco, but could possibly, uh, I'm telling you, the Corbin thing, uh, they, you heard Hunt talk a little bit about it. A lot of people that I was talking to that have familiarity with these conversations say that the door is not shut on, on Corbin. I, I, like I said yesterday, I, I don't know why you would leave Nashville just because of the, the job. For success. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, yeah, just, it, it's almost like you have this... Um, you have this built-in advantage that like nobody else has. Dabo effect. Yeah, yeah. It, it very much is. A year. It very much is the Clemson, Clemson job of 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 college baseball. I mean, they're probably going to win the national championship, and nobody's talking about them. It was mm-hmm. all Arkansas. It was yes. all it's Mississippi State. Oh, I got them as a yeah, and, but, uh, but but they weren't like they they very much weren't, and now everybody's it was just right back safe. to Vanderbilt again. Yeah, it seemed too easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they are well, a I mean, they, wagon. They got the dogs. They got two studs. <laughs> they got three studs. <laughs> I mean, they are loaded when you just look at their roster. And that's another thing, man. That, that when, when you look at these teams and, and, and you look at the way that they are, are put together and you look at them physically, you look at the way that they're built. I mean, oh, Tennessee look like the Mets. Where do you find these guys? I mean, Vanderbilt. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, Stop. these guys <laughs> look like... Major League Baseball players, while LSU, they look like Sigma Chi's. Not <laughs> Dylan Cruz. He's got some quads. They look like fraternity yeah. members. Well, <laughs> there's a couple of outliers. You know what I mean? But for the most part, they've all got floppy hair and no facial hair, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they look like the majority of the group of dudes that I ran with in college. Not to interrupt. Kumar Rocker is six Dude, I bet five. they slay. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, sure they, they crush do. it in some aspect of life. Sure I mean, they're do. good I mean, they're all at good looking cats. cats. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I'd rather my dude with uh, splotchy facial hair and, <laughs> and geo type waves coming out of the hat. That's mashing and, fa- and, and, and and eyeballing the pitcher as he sends it out of the yard. But I like that stuff, man. That's how LSU, if we're going to talk about the past and you want to recreate the past, that's who LSU was. I mean, I think of Rich Cordani. I, I think of Tookie Johnson. I, I think of these guys. Get that, your suit. We're going out. I mean, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Got his own okay. suit on in Vegas. Dad's lucky suit. Yes. Dad's, yes. <laughs> that's right. I mean, who's on this team that's making that call? Listen to the size of Kumar Rocker. 6'5", 245. Bro, his dad was the best defensive tackle in the SEC. His dad is the defensive tackle coach for... Check it out. Uh, He was at Georgia. Uh, His name's Tracy Rocker. But when you go back and even when you when you go back and watch hold the rope, look at Lyle Mouton. He's pimping every home run he hits. Like we had the we had the absolute biggest dick in the room, and now and now LSU doesn't feel like we're that anymore, which sucks. We were watching highlights of him. Like who is that guy? I'm telling you, it's you're just built different. You're designed different, and that comes from the top down. Hundred percent. That's a vision in recruiting. I want my team to look like this. I want Vitello jumping in the GD stands, yeah. coming after the, the student section. Tight like, 90s jerseys, yes. too. Like, all of it. Um, but so, that doesn't seem like that's where we're going. That yeah, you do. <laughs> Hell, we all do, man. And you're trying to get a Duty Noble in one of those suites with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Tony, the Mississippi State job might open up. Let me show you some of the perks. There's some apartments. Like <laughs> I've got a key. <laughs> uh, daily, we are brought to you by Hub International Insurance. I've got a goat. Hub International uh, Insurance, the official insurance agency of the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, find out how they can help you out today online at Hub International Insurance. Did you see over the weekend that uh, Arch Manning was in Austin, Texas? In fact, Arch made the trip over to uh, to uh, to Central Texas. He stopped into Dallas and stopped by Sonny Dykes' program over at SMU where he Jesus. met with both Dykes and offensive coordinator Garrett Riley. And then he made his trip to Austin where they rolled the red carpet out. Mm-hmm. Earl Campbell, <laughs> Vince Young. Colt McCoy, Brian Arakpo, Michael Huff, Jamal Charles, and Matthew McConaughey. Stop. All I'm curious, say, there's no headline campus. in there until that. Where's Ricky? Stop. All on campus <laughs> really? to roll out the red carpet for the Mannings. They were all there, That's and from nice. all accounts, um, and, and this is coming from Nelson Stewart, who's the head coach over at Isidore uh, Newman High School, Newman High School over in New Orleans where Arch plays. Uh, he told 247 that Sark has truly been phenomenal. Connecting before and during each visit, etc. a true pro has gone above and beyond. Uh, people that are close to 
the Arch Manning situation have always said that Steve Sarkeesian has made an instant impact, made an instant impact on the entire family, but more than anyone, it was Arch that really had the attention uh, of Sark. And Sark was the lead recruiter for Arch while Steve Sarkeesian was calling plays in Tuscaloosa for Nick Saban. He was the guy that, that was the lead contact there. Now, I think that Saban has always overseen that recruitment, but Sark was the point guy early on on Arch and really made an impact on the entire family, on Cooper, Archie, uh, on anybody that he had access of talking to. Uh, but more than anyone, Arch has been sincerely impressed with what Steve Sarkeesian is selling. Um, remember, Brandon Harris, former LSU quarterback, uh, is, is, is on that staff as the recruiting coordinator, and he and I share text messages and go back and forth, and I can promise you that the number one player on Texas's board Whoa. is Arch Manning. Um, just because of, of, of Steve Sark, you, you wouldn't see that. You know, University of Texas, usually there's some in-state guys that you want to make sure that you get mm -hmm. first and foremost before you start hunting those big fish. And, and Arch is the biggest fish that they want to bring in um, and, and well, that Sark lets you know that they think they out. have an absolute legitimate I think they, shot. I think they believe in, in, in just trading a couple of text messages, reading between the lines, seeing how they treated this weekend, talking about the, the Texas people, that they, they obviously believe that they have a real shot here. If he didn't go to the SEC, and Clemson feels like they did a really good job of, of, of putting forth their best showing a couple of weeks back when he was on campus with them, uh, it feels like Texas would be a school that would make sense. He could save for that conference. If Arch, think what that would do for Texas and the, the Longhorn Network. I think it could save the conference because it's just Oklahoma's conference right now. And, Iowa State. And they're kind of a laughing stock nationally. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma routinely gets to the college. Well, they have the Notre, and yeah. the Notre Dame. They have the Notre yeah. Dame vibe of like, oh, you're in, but you're about to get curb stomped. Right. Thanks. Um, so, uh, a story to watch with Arch. Damn, because... they brought in the Minister of Culture. Bro, they brought in everybody. <laughs> Why Matthew McConaughey? Why, Why not, not Matthew what does that McConaughey? Have to do with He's this, Mr. Though. Austin. Because they I get know, older and I stay the same. <laughs> He's a professor. <laughs> <laughs> and Arch, Arch has How vibes funny. that he would, uh, he would know who, who McConaughey is. Yeah. Oh, I you know hope I mean? he knows, right? I'm, I'm that would telling be weird you. if he didn't. I mean, Anthony Edwards, Edwards doesn't yeah. know who a -Rod I mean, is. that's true, but you know he's McConaughey. I mean, he's 16 years old. Like, no, he's, he there's a chance like he doesn't know who movie. McConaughey is, no, but, I mean, he no, does. No, have you seen Dazed and Confused? I know. He's, he's but Dazed and Confused is an older movie. And he's five years younger than Noah. That's, that's, I mean, that's how you know McConaughey, right? I mean, that's what you laugh out about McConaughey. I mean, when I think of McConaughey, I think Pothead. I think, you know, Austin. I think... I think those types of things. I think dazed and confused. Yeah, but I, I think mean, back of a Lincoln. I mean, yeah, there <laughs> you who's go. driving this car? Or selling meat? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. He's, he's selling beef, <laughs> slanging meat. I mean, he's, he's 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 the he's the spokesman for the beef uh, beef and cattle company. But um, there's probably so much no, money how, in that. No, you're 19. I mean, did you know Matthew McConaughey before we talked about him? Yeah. Okay, you knew how do you know, how okay. do you, when you hear the name Matthew McConaughey? What do you think? I think you think Wolf of Wall Street. Probably Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. And that's the old McConaughey. Yeah. 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 Interstellar. Ugh. That's not the cool McConaughey. Have you seen Daisy Confused? We talked about it. I haven't seen yeah, it. We talked about it. How have you not? Yeah, you gotta no. see it. <laughs> I mean, How like, have you not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not cultured, I guess. You're totally <laughs> faggot out right now. How have you not? You are Dazed and Confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you, are the, you, you are the movie. Standing 8 count. <laughs> yeah, right. watch That's that movie. Like, Come back to tomorrow. We'll see how you That's act. my homework. Yeah, you should have a project today. Watch Dazed and Confused. <laughs> you write, another, write a paper write a, on it. Write a book report on that. <laughs> this is Joss, a school I need. Joss on Spiller's Dentistry. Remember, you can get in touch with Dr. Joss on Dr. Spiller's. You can hit them online at johnsonspillers.com. As they're there, two locations, one in Gonzales, one in Baton Rouge. The one in Baton Rouge is on Perkins Road in between Segan and Blue Bonnet. Stop it and see them. They're on Facebook, they're on social media, and they're online at johnsonspillers.com. Dude, if McConaughey is showing me around Austin, Texas, how do you say no? Like, I don't, dude, that's, cool. a bigger, I don't that's a bigger card than Nick Saban showing you around Alabama. Yeah, like, this is way cooler than whatever you were trying to sell me. <laughs> like, mean, where are we? Who's our McConaughey? <laughs> What's the LSU version oh, of that? Ed, or, like Ed Orgeron. Alan, hazard. <laughs> no, he's not vibing. He's got the Confederate flag on top of his car. No. <laughs> I was I mean, kidding. Got to get him out of there. Um, <laughs> they canceled. Yes, quick. Kidding. I don't know if there uh, is anyone I mean, like that, right? Jordy. Nobody's like that. Nobody's I mean, like that. Todd Graves. 
I, just thought, I mean, Todd Graves is awesome, but it doesn't have, no, there's no McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey, there's, no McConaughey. there's one of one, dude. And if that guy... Well, Shaq. Shaq. Yeah, but, Shaq. Yeah, but he's, not, he's not accessible like that. McConaughey he's is, around. is too he famous. Is a he, profes- he is a professor on the campus. What, he what is he doing there? I mean, do? what do you office think hours. he's doing? He's to office hours. Is he yeah. married? <laughs> yeah, he's married. To, um, to the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just like a regular person, I think. I like, uh, bet. I'm serious. She's probably like, cool with like all of it. Gotta be. Have to be if you're marrying him. You gotta be cool with a lot of things if you're What's marrying him. What's your name? Him. Okay. <laughs> Arch, meet my wife. Right this way. <laughs> um... Who knows what McConaughey's doing? That's what that, but that's the, that's the cool too. I mean, remember on Game Day when Ellis? He might be. He's up there. I mean, he is definitely a a top three. Let's just hang, Let's get him grab on the a show. beer, Gronk. I tried. Hey, I tried so hard to get him one during the LSU um, Texas Texas game. Oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, I I tried everything. I mean, you would figure if he's a professor, he's got an email. At Texas. <laughs> at right? McConaughey at texas.edu. Right. <laughs> uh, in McConaughey 1. <laughs> Wooderson. Wooderson at texas.edu. <laughs> that's his, that's his, his uh, aim account. Tom Hart next. He was on the call for LSU Tennessee. We'll get the latest from the SEC Network's play-by-play here on the Jordy Collada Show presented by Ghost Chevrolet. Damn. <laughs> Are you self-employed? then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back in here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered every day by Go Chevrolet. Check them out online, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. We saw LSU baseball season come to a uh, come to an end uh, last weekend as uh, the pulmonary rain. Uh, after 36 seasons as a college baseball coach, we said yesterday, Maneri woke up for the first time in nearly 40 years without a ballpark to go to. Tom Hart was on the call for the, uh, the, the Super Regionals. As Tennessee stamps their ticket to Omaha, and he's here with us on the Jordy Colada Show on this Tuesday morning. Tommy, good morning. How are you, man? Jordy, how are we doing this morning? Doing good. Doing Pipes good. are still fresh. Yes, <laughs> they are, man. Uh, <laughs> true professional. Um, we, we, what about that environment that, that you saw over in Knoxville this weekend, man? It felt like a lot of, uh, of LSU as, as, as we, are, uh, we, we are talking about LSU uh, trying to fill this open, seat, this open and vacancy. Uh, with their, their their college baseball coach, with their their head baseball coach, and it feels like they may be chasing the past a little bit. When when we watched that that environment on Saturday in Knoxville, it felt like the old days in Baton Rouge. Yeah, I, I think there's a comp to be made there. Um, I think the difference is in and not to lump you know a bunch of teams in in the elite category uh, because it is special, but. What we saw last night at Mississippi State, um, what we've seen at LSU over the years, what Arkansas is able to do, even Ole Miss, those are traditional programs that have had solid backing for years. I think Ole Miss is second in the country in season tickets sold. Mississippi State sets a record over the weekend. LSU, the best college baseball fan base uh, and the most passionate Um in Arkansas, had, had incredible crowds. This 
those crowds have been building over years and years and years, right? I mean, Mississippi State and LSU back to the mid-'80s when those crowds started to build and, and baseball was a big deal. Tennessee hasn't been there. You know, they had a couple runs here, a run there. They just haven't been a, a baseball school. So it's neat to see from an SEC perspective them embrace the sport, and and it's good to see – and like any fan base in the SEC, you give them a winner, they're going to show up. And I think that's what we've seen from them this year. The question is, can they sustain it? Can they get more dudes on campus? Can they continue to win? Can they hold on to their coach? Um, so all those things go into this in this big pot. Over the weekend, it produced a very rowdy, loud, excitable crowd. Um, and I hope, because we're missing – the LSU fan base in Omaha. We're missing the Arkansas tickets sold in Arkansas, uh, in Omaha, pardon me. I hope that those same people that showed up and were outside the stadium, as well as those inside, say, hey, it's a really cool opportunity for us to go to Omaha and uh, follow our team there. It's a great trip. It is a uh, one of the fantastic uh, sports environments over in Omaha for those that week and a half watching, watching that tournament. When I say Paul Maneri, you have covered him for a while now. When when, when, when you remember him now that he is stepping away from the game, uh, what comes to mind? Class, dignity, professionalism. Um, I first covered him when he was at Notre Dame. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Midwestern Catholic kid. So those are the words I associate with Notre Dame, you know, growing up. And, and that's what I thought of. So when I first went in there and I met this guy, here's, here's Notre Dame. And he – that was it. Like that was a, that was a fit for me. Um, and took kind of like we we're just talking about, but took a program that doesn't have baseball history and put a great team together and a very athletic team. And then they end up at Omaha and, you know, he, we had him on the zoom call the other day and, and Chris Burke asked him, what would you say to an up and coming coach? given that you've had this track record and, and you're a Hall of Famer and you, you won a national title, what would your advice be? And he said, I just, I tried to do everything in this business, in this sport with, with those qualifiers, with class and dignity and professionalism. And he, he kind of reflected a little bit and he said, and he, obviously he's been reflecting over the last couple of months, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, he had an opportunity to stop and smell the roses because he had decided this, this is going to be it. This is going to be last time I put on my uniform. Um, he said, everything I've done, I've tried to do in those ways. And while people celebrate the 1500th win, and that's great, I'm just thankful that they don't, you know, call me out for my 700 losses because in this game, it will humble you. And you've got to be the same person and wins that you are in losses. And I thought that was, um, I thought that was, an interesting comment given that, you know, here he is on the tail end of it and reflecting on everything that he's been through. It, it, it will humble you and, and it will, it will bring you down because right. A, a great hitter fails seven times out of 10. Um, coaches are lucky to win. You stick around long enough to win 1500 games in a national title. Uh, you've been around for a while and you've, you've been in cold, rainy ballparks. This is, you've been there in the, the perfect days too. wins and losses combined. Tom Hart from the SEC Network joining us here on the Jordy Collada Show. We had a segment last week, Tom, where we kind of got off and we were talking as a crew that everybody in, in their life needs that one friend to tell them, don't wear that, don't say that, or, <laughs> you know, you got spinach in your teeth, bro. Just get that out of your teeth. Yeah. Um, I feel like you were probably great in that role for whoever you served that to. Um, and and I, I, I would like you to, to be that for me on this because I, I think that LSU – could offer their job to anybody that is out there. The, the, the list for the LSU baseball job should be whoever the best baseball coach in America is. I think that should be the list. And you should pick up the phone and you should call him, and if he says no, then you call the second best coach in, in, in college baseball. I think that that is Tony Vitello is, is the number one guy. Um, but it looks like there, there are some, some names being kicked around down here. Fr from your standpoint, 
do I need to be told that LSU's not that job anymore? Am I the old guy at the bar in my letter jacket talking about my 1995-1997 <laughs> national championship and people in. are laughing at me? Uh, what, what is the status of the LSU job from somebody who understands the sport like you do? It is the best job in baseball, and it should get the best coach available. However, oh. what we've learned, and, and I'll go back to the Texas job. I, I think that was a great barometer for how coaches and ADs think. What we've learned is that people don't like change. Um, that Texas job came open when Augie Garrido was forced out, and he was the winningest coach in college baseball when he was forced out. Um, Texas has more money than anybody. Is baseball as important on Austin's campus than it is in Baton Rouge? No. So it's it's not apples to apples. But you can obviously win there. They're regular in Omaha. They're going back this year. It, it's an elite job. And what happened when that job came up? What happened was Kevin O'Sullivan considered it, and Tim Corbin considered it, and Dan McDonald considered it, and Brian O'Connor considered it. And all these dudes got raises because all of these guys that considered the Texas job, even those that got on a plane and flew to Austin or those that just talked to people over the phone or met somebody in a hotel so they wouldn't go all the way to Austin, all those guys said to themselves, I got it really good where I am. And I can turn this into more money. And I, I probably have an AD who supports me, who I know and who knows me. And I have a ballpark that I like, and I have a recruiting base that I'm successful in. And, you know, Vanderbilt has, I, I don't ever make a big deal out of it, but Vanderbilt has this huge recruiting advantage with their scholarship situation. And so, yes, you're right. But people like the status quo, especially those who have been winning, and to take them away from it. And I, I talked with Kevin O'Sullivan about it. He said, man, I. I just got a brand new ballpark and I got all my guys in Florida and I, I get, you know, five first round picks every, every recruiting class. I, I got it really good here. I got an AD who built this ballpark for me. Um, and you, you can skip around and you can say the same thing at Louisville and at Vanderbilt and all the way down, uh, and you get pretty deep. You go pretty far down the list before you find somebody who says, uh, essentially, I am better than my job, meaning I can have more success by picking up and uprooting and going to Baton Rouge than I can have here where I am now. And I don't know, unless somebody else has issues with their AD or with their ballpark or with their local support or whatever, what the Texas job proved to us, it's really hard to get guys to uproot in college baseball because of the uniqueness of the sport. Good point. Don't think of it Didn't like, like that. Didn't like hearing any yeah, of that that I just heard. Very well described. <laughs> Seems well, like we're doing so, the... <laughs> no, so then, okay, the question is, well, who would be ready? Like, who's the guy that... Um, and, and who has a connection here and, and what would make sense. And the name I keep coming back to is Mike Bianco yeah. because here's a guy who has built a winner at Ole Miss. They have incredible local support, but he has built it to a point with the school down the road. And Starkville, by the way, where people say, well, let me just put it like this. I don't know that he feels fully appreciated for what he's accomplished in Oxford mm -hmm. and what he's built, where that program was to where it is now. And he gets a chance to come back to where he played, and his old coach is still there, and players, dudes that he played with, are there to support him. And where whatever there's been in Oxford, whatever cap there's been, that's only allowed him to make it to Omaha once. What, whether that's visible or invisible, whether we know what it is or it's unknown, that cap isn't there in, in the, at LSU, and we know that. Seems like so he, that would sorry. that would be who I would come to after all of this. Yeah, and it seems like he's the leader right now. I mean, it seems like from from everybody that is covering it and around it, and people that are have knowledge to it, it seems like the guy that LSU is targeting uh, at this point. SEC sends three teams to Omaha. 
you more surprised of Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt being there, or Arkansas not? Well, no, I'm not surprised Arkansas isn't there. That they had an awesome season. They were metronomic. They were so regular. They were consistent. They they won every weekend. Um, and then they got to Hoover and they got hurt. And they lost Sebulon Vermillion, who wasn't exactly an ace, but he was a dependable arm that they could put out there in the rotation. They lost their first baseman, Brady Slavin, to an ankle injury. Of course, he came back. But they were not the same team in the postseason that they were during the regular season. And the over-dependence on Kevin Copps is what cost him in the end, right? The, the home run comes in the eighth inning because Copps should have been out of there probably in the sixth. They had no one else to go to. Um, so I'm, I'm not surprised. And this uh, nothing against what they accomplished during the course of the season. But they just weren't – they simply weren't the same team. Um, and, and so I don't know if they would have – they win that one game against North Carolina State what happens to them in Omaha? Well, you would have had to win your first two games and really save your pitching to have success. To me, based on the makeup of the team, the rotation, the offensive firepower, Vanderbilt has been the team that I think has the best chance to win the national championship, not just out of the SEC, you know, once we got through Hoover, but obviously the teams that are left there now. It's still, you've got to get, you have to have elite pitching to put yourself in a position to make it to the championship series. And then you gotta, you've got to have dudes. And we know that they have two dudes that they throw out on the front end. They give them the chance to win the first two games of a three-game series. This has got to be a cool time for you, right? I mean, doing calls from your living room over the past year and then getting into environments like you were last weekend. How cool is it to be back out and about in, in, on campus? Well... We were at home last weekend. Oh. Yeah. Who's the asshole? I didn't mean to. I mean, I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's me. I didn't mean to spoil the party, but rain on the parade. Uh, but okay, so from a positive standpoint, we get to go to Omaha. Yes. So it's going to make it that much more special, you know, to be there and see thirty thousand people there and to see all of our buddies that we work with. It was kind of fits and stuff. We went to Hoover. Then we were home for two weekends, even though uh, we thought we'd, we'd be on the road at some point. So it'll be fun to be at the College World Series and see so many different fan bases and the excitement around the game. Uh, but what about that? So, like, this was this is about to be your window of kind of a break, right, in, in your in your job, kind of a short break in between college baseball and football season. I know there's a lot of prep work that goes in to that window, but now how different is it being that you've spent so much time at home and, and, and now get this break in, in going into football season? This has had to have been a – a cool experience of just the family life for you over the last couple of years or just uh, the last year. Yeah, that's a great point, Jordy. I mean, it's, there are, there's definitely a silver lining. You know, I, I finish a game and I unplug the zoom and I walk upstairs. Now I would much rather find better balance. Um, if you, if you're talking to a play by play broadcaster and he says, ah, I don't really need to be at the game. He's probably not, truly passionate about his job i mean there's can you do it from home yeah you can do it can you do it well and right no i mean mm -hmm. al michaels couldn't do it well from home you know you, you, you gotta be on site we miss so much i give you a quick example if we we're on site we had a great meeting with paul before the super regional if we we're on site would have gone down the field during batting practice and we would have said how you feeling about marcel mm -hmm. or what if what if he's fatigued you know, how, how early would you go to Fontenot? And if you're watching the broadcast, it was something that we kind of harped on. We felt like the game was being decided in the middle innings and go ahead and use Fontenot now. I'm sure Paul had a reason for not doing it, but we were left to speculate because we, we didn't have that casual but informative conversation with him that we have when we're at the ballpark every day where we kind of cover the bases of, you know, in this situation, what would you do? And it, it just helps everybody. Um, so, yeah, are there silver linings? Great, man. I, I ran carpool more or I made more lunches. You know, we had more family dinners than, than we normally would. But um, on the from a professionalism side, I got I just I get so excited when I go to the games when I'm at the ballpark, when I can see the entire field and when I can pick I can pick my camera angle, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. I can watch whatever I want to watch 
from my view in the press box instead of being required to watch through a through a monitor what somebody else is showing me. And that's that's all part of the experience to me. But there's no chance you're wearing pants right when you're doing the game from home. <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> chance. <laughs> Tommy, thank you as always, man. Have a great rest of the week. We'll talk soon. You guys are the best. Enjoy, enjoy Omaha. There is uh, Tom Hart checking in from the SEC Network this morning. So I'm the asshole. Huh? Yeah, Didn't guy, know that, huh? Man. I hate those. <laughs> but you can you can kind of tell that they're kind of that they're not there. You know, they're as much as they as much as you can't like they do such a great job of. It seems like they're in the environment, but you can tell that they're almost like a beat behind because they're watching it from a monitor at home, which yeah. sucks for them. It has to feel like this isn't the way I want to call the game at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I, I've done play-by-play, -play, and I can't imagine not doing it on site. You're reacting instead I mean, of predicting. You are, absolutely are. And like he said, where you can pick your own camera angle, a lot of the things that you talk about in play-by-play -play during dead periods of action, and I can't imagine how much dead time there is in baseball. compared. I mean, I've only done football and basketball on play-by-play, -play, and both of those are, are quick you know, kind of quick moving, especially basketball, but I mean... There is downtime in football where you got to fill a little bit, and a lot of those filling conversations come from around the ballpark of what's going on. Yeah, look at that right? guy. Look down on the sideline. The backup quarterback's taking a couple of, of snaps, a you know, whatever it may be. Uh, somebody's getting their ankle taped up. I mean, so whatever is happening around the park, you usually try to talk about within the game and bring that, bring that experience to the to to the listener and to be able to. Uh, or not to be able to be on campus or be on site or be at the field and, and have those conversations. Uh, I can't imagine how tough that is in that, in that, in that role. I mean, that, that the is the best part of the job. <laughs> sure. I mean, and like he said, if you're talking to a play by play guy that has enjoyed more being at home than being at the park, well, then he probably doesn't, he or she doesn't have the passion for, for the, the, the role. Because to me, that is, that would get me, I almost felt like, in, in big games when I was doing play-by-play -play and you had the chance to go down on the field before the games and kind of take in all that, it almost felt like you were playing. Yeah, you get that foreplay. I mean, almost, yeah, it was absolutely. You get worked up and you go up back to the booth and you bring that to the listener. And the people context. can hear that. You know what I mean? People can hear that it's big. Like, this is a big, I can hear by the way that he's talking. This is a, this is a huge game. You know, and you can't, you can't create that from your living room your living room. you just can't do it and especially especially in this sport when it's college baseball and what do we talk what have we talked about most it's the environment like when you're out there and you're at like an sec super regional or any super regional for that matter like you can absolutely feel the passion and the tension of being there so it elevates the moment a little bit and i'm sure he's like chomping at the bit to be able to get to go to omaha and feel that kind of yeah. feeling again because like you said calling it from your house you're like I mean, I'm, I love the job that I'm doing, but it's just not the same. Yeah, you're not in it. I mean, I was talking to John Brady about this. And Brady, I don't know if you've heard me. I know I've How said hard this. is that? Dude? I've said this before. Um, I don't know if I've said it here, but, but it needs to be said. Basketball, play-by-play, -play, and color commentary on the radio is the hardest in yeah. the trade. It's the most difficult in the, in the trade, in the industry of play-by-play, -play, just because... You've got to paint a picture, and you've got only about a three-second window <laughs> to really make that happen on average. Now, there may be a three- to ten-second window on some possessions where you can talk about it, but in the color commentary role, you've got to give that thing back to the play-by-play -play so he can describe the action, and you've just got to kind of pepper in your thoughts, and Brady does a just the best job I've ever heard. He I'm, I'm, and, and look, I'm biased because... He's so close to me and a friend of mine, but the job he does of painting a picture inside of a small window that makes it very vivid for you, the listener, to really say clearly, like, and you're listening to him, you're thinking, I see what he's saying, I understand what he's saying, uh, is very, very difficult to do. And John Brady is, is in that gig uh, because of his, you know, his status with LSU basketball, uh, his familiarity with the sport. Uh, and also his contacts within the league. And, and one of the, the, the biggest advantages of having a guy like John Brady on the LSU Sports Radio Network team is that when you know Chris Blair and the crew, they land at the arena and, and go in there during shoot-around, Brady knows everybody. He, he knows all the coaches. He knows all the assistants. He knows all of the, the personnel. Guys. He knows all of the, the, the administrators from a lot of these schools. 
from just going around, playing them over the years, having contacts in, in that industry, having people that he's known that is coached with, people that have coached uh, with people that he knew that come introduce it. I mean, a lot of that goes in to the prep work and in talking to him about not being able to get out this past season and, and, and go to venues and call games. I mean, he said it really took the air out of the gig. He loved it. He loved what he, you know, he loves the opportunity. He, he, he loves being able to be around LSU basketball, but, but not being in the arena every day not talking to the, the, the support staff or the, the coaching staff from, from the opponent, not getting to, to, to get into the arena and, and really take in the environment uh, I mean, was, was definitely something that watered down the, the, the experience. Well, there's a reason you do it, that it's been done that way for a million years. Like, there's a reason that they haven't been doing it from home forever. Like, you have to be a part of the environment. You're very much there and in the moment, and it, it does affect the call. Like, if, you're, if you have the fans behind you if you're doing basketball, like, you feel, you feel that moment so much more differently than you do if you're, you're like Tom said, right sit, yeah, he's sitting in, he's, he's wearing a sports coat in his underwear. He's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm watching the game like you are. No. Yeah. Uh, and I can only see what you see. Right. You, you know don't what get I mean? any you of that. You want your play-by-play guy to say, hey, look down the right field line right now. They have a fan look who's jumping warming, out yeah. there. So or look who's warming whatever's up. Whatever's happening, take me to the ballpark. Yes. Take me to the game. Put me inside of the arena. And, um, yes, those guys, those people, those those uh, you know men and women need to get back to the facilities. This won't be the new normal, right? I don't think so. I don't so, think least, so. Right? I think they've I think gotten a lot of pushback. Once, once you... I mean, Jordy see, couldn't tell, but... Once you see the upgrade <laughs> in the product of having them back on campus or yeah. back inside of the, the booth, it's not... It, it, there's no comparison. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's no Just comparison... Just that visceral live reaction to you ...to having get. Tom Hart in a press box compared to having Tom Hart in his living room. And Tom Hart is the best. He is one of the best play-by-play guys that our country can offer you. And he is the most versatile play-by-play guy that our country can offer you. I mean, he is a modern-day Al Michaels. He can call baseball. He can call football. Basketball. He can call basketball. He can call hockey. He can call whatever you want him to call. He can make it sound like he is in the action. And that is a skill and that is a talent mm-hmm. that if people don't have any idea, that, that, that is incredible. I mean, that is incredibly hard to do. It is... Um, just a, a an extreme talent within that industry, and that's why I think he needs to be the play-by-play voice of the ABC SEC game that's going to launch next year. I mean, I know there's a lot of discussion of uh, of um, Joe Tessitore, who is who's good, but I, he's so professional. He's a little he's stuffy. I like Tessitore a lot. He's great, but yes, he's, he's very tight. He's very prof- like it's the because he grew he's up too doing, buttoned up. He did the boxing, so he has like those. And that's where he's, he's yes, best. Yes, so he has that like ability to do those things, but it feels. Like he tries to bring that into the into the booth, and it's and a Tom little. Tom Hart feels very relatable. Yes, like he, he gets feels very yes. easy. He laughs. He he makes his his partner laugh within the, the the broadcast. I mean, he is very good at 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 his job of just uh, being very listenable and being very informative. And to pull both of those things off at the rate he does is very difficult. And to Come to find out that, that he's still doing that from his living room, um, you know, I think is a testament to his greatness, really. Um, but, but getting him back into the venue, once you hear those calls compared to the last year calls, you throw the last year of tapes away. And you say, the fact that we even thought, about, this. thought about extending this to a, a permanent protocol is laughable. Um, so, especially when he, oh, I'm sorry, especially when he like, brings that energy whenever he gets out to Omaha. Like him being back in the building because he's he probably misses it more than we think he does. Yeah. You know, like so for, so for him to be back in that environment is going to be awesome. The call is going to be better. Uh, okay, we'll talk to Chris Reed next here coming up. We'll get Reed's thoughts on where LSU baseball goes from now uh, with the opening, uh, how they upgrade the box. I saw Chris Reed was talking about this mm-hmm. yesterday on uh, on social media, so we'll get his thoughts as well as uh, daily. We are brought to you by Elevate. Uh, remember, Elevate, you can find them here in Baton Rouge as they are a drug and alcohol rehab center uh, that you can begin your treatment today online at elevatetreatment.com. That is E-L-E-V, the number 8, treatment.com. Get in touch with Elevate Treatment and Legacy Center right here as they're dedicated to treating patients who are battling drug and alcohol addiction. Their goal is to guide you and your steps towards recovery 
in helping you achieve and maintain sobriety. Remember, if you want to start your treatment today, you don't want to pick up the phone, you don't want to talk to anybody, uh, you can do that online at E-L-E-V, the number 8, treatment.com, elevatetreatment.com here in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We'll be back with Chris Reed right here on the Jordy Collada Show. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Stick around, a regular Ted Lasso, Peter Kuig, Baton Rouge native, now a UK citizen. My guy has a visa. <laughs> they call him the American. He's got to live there 181 days, buddy. Incredible. Um, Lives off fish and chips. Bad. He is at the UDL, and he is going to be in next. He seems like he is uh, great vibes here for the. We Jordan heard the guttural <laughs> giggle outside. I mean, we heard y'all hamming it up already in yes, the break. Yes, uh, I grew up with his brother Fitz Kuig. I thought that was the Peter Kuig that was going to be here. It is the Peter Kuig that is here, so it's going to be a good closeout of the show here on a Tuesday morning as uh, the Baton Rouge native and now uh, the professional soccer executive. Manager? Wow, coach. Manager. manager. They're called managers. Yeah. Probably nice suits, dude. They have to like get dappered up. Yeah, not his style. Out of that, no. <laughs> not, it's very Ted Lasso. Like, not if you haven't seen it, that's who he is. Not his style. 
Uh, Chris Reed is here. He's a regular with us here on the Jordy Collada Show. Always appreciate his insight on baseball, whatever's happening. Remember, we tell you all the time, you need one-on-one training. If, you're, uh, if your youngster is looking for some training here in baseball, there's no better option than Chris Reed right here in Baton Rouge. My guy is all over the place helping out kids. You can find him on Twitter at ChrisReed1212. His DMs are open. Uh, odds are he could give you his phone number before he gets out of here this morning. Uh, but if you need one-on-one training, find former LSU baseball standout, St. Michael standout, Baton Rouge native Chris Reed. Professional hitter. Uh, on uh, on Twitter, at ChrisReed1212. Uh, we love the fact that you were asking how you upgrade the Alec Box Stadium environment and experience. Uh, we are agreeing with you 100% on that. Uh, we will get to it. Uh, but first off, give me your recap of last weekend. What did you think of LSU and the pulmonary era closing uh, for the Tigers? Yeah, obviously it, uh, it wasn't the outcome that the fans and the players wanted. Um, but I feel like for that team, I feel like they, you know, them making it to that super regional and being competitive and that by that nature, I, I think they, uh, I think they did well this season. Um, I'm excited for the core group that we have coming back. Uh, and, you know, and, and touching base on the pulmonary, uh, his reign and his era, uh, you know, it, it's sad to see come to an end, um, you know, just because I was a part of that and I, I feel for the guy, I, I, but I know he's, I know he's happy. I know that he's been, like I said, he's been dealing with a lot of medical issues and whatnot and, and, and being a coach, there's a lot of things that people don't know that he has to deal with, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and I just feel like it, it wore down on him a good bit. And, and, and I'm just happy for him to enjoy retirement. And I'm happy for him to enjoy his family. He's a huge family guy. Um, and, and I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, where it goes from here. So, uh, w- without giving away any type of, of, of personal details, just of the overall experience of a college baseball coach in 2021, Chris. What, what are some of the stuff that, that you have to deal with off the field that we may not even, as, as fans or people that cover the sport, may not even think about? Yeah, well, he, a, lot of, a lot of coaches have to, have to deal with, um, you know, booster clubs. They have to deal with media obligations. They have to do a ton of paperwork. Um, they have yeah. to, yeah, you have to fill out all the paperwork for official visits. You got to fill them out for any recruiting contact for the NCAA and they have to document all this stuff. Um, and there, and there's a bunch of different other things he has to go do, you know, guest appearances. He has, um, you know, uh, Coaches show. Other ob- yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has other obligations with charities and things like that, but he, he, he enjoys some of it. And, you know, obviously it's just like anything else. You enjoy some of it and you don't, necessarily enjoy parts of you know other sure. parts of it and and but it's, it's part of the job and 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 he he's done a fantastic job at that uh, over the last you know 14 13 years of his career and uh and it's just, it's something that you don't see unless you're there and honestly even even when you're there you don't even see most of it uh, most of it at that point either so, um, you know, I, I, I feel for him there, and, and I'm ho- hopefully, you know, mentally and physically is very taxing, and I, I hope it's going to help him out uh, physically and mentally. The LSU baseball fraternity is as mm-hmm. strong of a group uh, that this city, state, and that the state, uh, the state university uh, has. Um, mm-hmm. it, it seems like the guys that played for Paul Maneri want one guy, and then the guys that played – or skip one another guy. I saw that you put out your top three candidates on Twitter last week when Maneri announced that he was going to be stepping away, and none of them had LSU ties. Um, yeah. What do you think uh, of this opening? How important is it from from your point of view to to stick with somebody that you're familiar with, or or should the 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 job entail? Hey, who's the best, and go get him. Uh, I think. I personally think it should be whoever is the best. We have to go get them. Uh, I, and yes, our, our uh, baseball alumni 
and sports alumni in general are pretty are pretty close together. Um, I've had uh, former players ranging from you know early Skip days to um, even early Paul days uh, contact me and ask me and and trying to trying to get a general gauge of what the players in today's era would want. Uh, and, you know, I've expressed that, uh, that kids nowadays more than anything are going to want somebody that they can connect to. And that's usually going to be a younger person, a more energetic person, um, somebody that has a little fire in their system. Um, uh, but yet it's still, you know, still knows how to run, run the program and, and do things the right way and can win. Uh, and it can make them better. So, um, you know, Yes, I, I agree with you in terms of I think uh, the Paul people want one, the, the Skip people want another. Um, but I, like you said, I put out my uh, I put out my top three, and uh, I would I'm still sticking to those guns uh, regardless of whatever information is coming out right now. Go pay the guy. Go get the Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Go get him, bro. I mean, what else did you have to see this weekend? It, he's he's so good. Mm-hmm. He's so good. Yeah. I mean, the one knock, the one knock I will say, and in, 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 I'm sure you've seen it on social media and whatnot, is um, I guess you could say the slight unprofessionalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, Called passion. You, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, it. it I get it's it. Gonna oh. ruffle, it's going to yeah. ruffle the feathers. I, I, I was actually talking to my dad about this the other day. If they ended up hiring Vitello, it's going to ruffle the feathers up of the, of the skip. Yeah. Uh, not a, not really the players, but the fans from that era, right? Because era, because they are they're really not used to that, and we're so traditional based. Um, you know, speaking as the program, it's very traditionally based, and and he is not a you know a, a traditional person that you would see you know in the LSU jersey as a coach. So um, I know that would kind of kind of butt heads, but at the same time, if you want to win. You know, it's not. It's, you're never going to have the perfect coach. So, mm-hmm. if you want to win, you you know you got to. If you want to get the best person and you want to win, you, sometimes you got to take some negatives to get the positives. So, um, is there a better time to do that than now? Like, is it is after you know you go from Skip to Smoke to Paul, and it was all very much, um, like you know the the uniform hire. Is and now LSU baseball it seems like they're at a tipping point almost to where we need to kind of shake things up. Is this not the time to do, to make a hire like Vitello? Yeah, no, it is definitely is the time. Um, I, I know, obviously, people are throwing around, around Bianco um, and Godwin's name. Um, and look, I'm not saying they're bad coaches. They're very, very good at what they do. Uh, and, and to be honest, I'm not going to be upset if they do hire one of the two. But I think for LSU to maximize their potential and to get the best crop of players that we can get you know, in the next 10 years or in the next era, it's going to, it's more than likely going to be Vitello is going to be able to, to maximize that potential. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 right now is the, is the right time to go and do that, to hire, to take a chance, hire somebody that's relatively young. You know, he, he's not the most proven, but he obviously is, he's been at TCU. Look what TCU's done in the last 20 years, right? He's been at Arkansas. Look what Arkansas has done in, in the last 10 years since he's been there. And then now look at Tennessee. I, I can tell you one thing. None of, those, none of those teams that I've mentioned have a problem with recruiting. Mm. Arkansas recruited well. Tennessee's recruited well. And TCU's recruited dang well. And all of them have made Omaha trip while he's there. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think TCU may have won a national championship while he's there. I'm not 100% sure. And if I'm not mistaken, Arkansas should have. Yeah, they, they dropped the they fly dropped, ball. Yeah, dropped the foul ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they should have won the national championship while he was there. Yeah. You, you, can so, pin, you can pinpoint to Arkansas's roster just blowing up and getting dudes to Tony Vitello. Yep. I mean, like, yeah. it, it is. It yep. no, the, the direct line is Vitello. Uh, yeah. and, and then making Tennessee a winner is enough said. I mean, like, they, they built that place 
that small because they never anticipated anybody was going to show up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and I had somebody tell me this the other day, and I kind of agree with it. He's the type of coach, the type of guy that you don't like him unless he's on your mm-hmm. team. He's Will Wade. Mm-hmm. He's Will Wade. It, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, and, 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 and it draws me back to when we played them at, uh, at Arkansas one time, and we beat them, and it was a top, let's say, five matchup. Uh, we ended up stealing um, the last game from them to win the series at their home park, and Vitello was like ready to fight us in the outfield. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Hire him! Like he thought, he thought, he thought we had said something in our in our uh, like our team meeting in the outfield, and, and they were in, yeah. they were in left field, and we were in right field, and this guy comes running across center field yelling at us. <laughs> and we and we are all like, what? What is this? What's who, this guy's problem? Who is like, this lunatic? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, and it was Vitello, Wait. and he just fired up, wanting to what, like yelling at us from you know center field, trying to get us some fight. We're like, all right, but but that's but that, that's a fire that you yes. that's a fire that we don't that yes. we haven't had. We don't we don't nec- we didn't necessarily need that fire, but I feel like now. We need somebody that can just pin his ears back and get after it. So, you know, that's my take on that part. Do you think he almost coached himself out of the LSU job this weekend with how much he kind of ruffled feathers? Yeah, that's that's and and that's why I mentioned earlier about the the professionalism part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like you said he he beats to his own drum. He does things his way, and and they work. So you can't fault him for doing that. Right. Um. But I feel like it, it was magnified because of their fans. Um, you know, LSU's not in that position. They wouldn't, they wouldn't know what a coach would have to do at a smaller school, like a, a smaller baseball school like that, because we haven't been that way since, I mean, before, you know, right, probably right, right as Skip had gotten here. But, I mean, you remember, remember the old box. How vicious was the old yeah. box? I mean, right. I remember Ruthless. going to the old yeah. box. I remember when I was going to the old box when I was ten years old, and I was saying stuff that I probably didn't say. Sure, so I, you know, sure. You know, because the, the guy yeah, next I, to I you was, was saying it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Learn I mean, I learned. Alex I learned half my. I learned half a. I learned half a dialogue just from some of the fans there that I that I have learned. No doubt. You know, um, uh, but but that's the way it was, and and, and 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 now it doesn't have to be like that because of what we built it into. So he's in that. He's in that first part that, of that phase, I believe. I can't get you out of here without asking you this. If Scott Woodward brings you in as a consultant on how to upgrade the box, what's the first thing that you're doing? Jello shots. Yes. Well, <laughs> um, no. I, I look. I, I know. I know the batter's eye is one of the is one of the, it's it's been one of the worst things uh, about the new box. I still can't fathom the fact that when we built it, we decided to go with that. Uh, it's it's very embarrassing, hmm. um, and everybody thinks that. Even the you know even the players. Uh, so, I think that would be the first thing to go. Um, it, it there's a couple different things. I, I want to see, like I said, I wanted to see uh, Sweet go down the line all the way down, just like Arkansas yeah. kind of does. Um, and with the overhang obviously going down, I think that'll kind of make the the that'll kind of close off the the outskirts of it and it'll I think it'll hold noise a little bit better uh and then I, I would probably just say do something in the outfield uh like a student you know, section with, with that, with, yeah well with a student section and with some other stuff and and I guess I, I can't give away too much Ooh. information but oh, oh shit oh. he sounds like he knows something look at this guy can, who is the well, next LSU head coach <laughs> oh no 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 I can't no, even if I did, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give it up. There's some, some things you just can't give up. Oh, you we know? hear you, bro. We're talking about it. We understand. But no, there's, understand. but no, I mean, there's there's things there's things in the works. So yeah. it, it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see in the next couple of years. I know COVID COVID kind of pushed back some plans, um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see in the next four years and to see what the uh, the new coach kind of agrees to. What's the what, what's the timeline on that? You said next couple of years. Where are we kind of? Just if you can give that much information away on, on maybe a little renovation. Well, so let's see. 
it was COVID is COVID kind of is, is kind of screwed it up. Cause there was, um, just, I just feel like it was in this next year or two. And now I would probably venture to say, I doubt it's going to be done by like stuff's going to be done by next year. So I'd probably venture to say three years. Real, real quick, Reed, uh, what is, what is batter's eye? Just for explain to our audience, we got a couple of questions coming in from, from people that are listening. Oh. Yeah, so it's the backdrop behind the center field uh, fence. It is. It covers basically. It allows. Uh, it's black, green, blue. Those are usually the more predominant colors used for it. And it is a big, like a. It can be metal, but ours happens to be like a uh, big like atrocity. almost. Like a, mm-hmm. Yeah, like a claw, a claw. Like it's like a. It's just bad, and um, it uh, it is it. it it's really tall. It stands up, and it basically the, it helps the hitter be able to see the ball better because it's a solid backdrop instead of um, you know it not being there. And now, if there's like a some building that's in the backdrop that's white or a flag that may be white, well then for the hitter it can be a huge disadvantage if that ball ends up coming out of the pitcher's hand hand and crosses into the path of that flag or that building because wow. now you're, you're not going to see the ball well so what they do is they put a solid cover up about 50 to 60 feet in the air um you know and make it a big uh, rectangle so that it helps the hitter kind of visualize the ball better and it kind of evens the playing field out so every field every field has it um i hope we i hope we do exactly what arkansas did with their bat, their batter's eye and I know their batter's eye is like four hundred thousand dollars or something like that, or three hundred thousand dollars, and it's it's pretty expensive um, just to put up a metal wall. Uh, and uh, so I know that's why they've been shying away from it. But I mean, at this point in time, you got to have it. It's just an eyesore for for Alex Box. Chris Reed offering uh, individual training. Remember, if you're out there looking for some help in getting uh, your your son or daughter a better player, uh, get in touch with Chris Reed online or on Twitter. At Chris Reed twelve twelve, and you hear him here on the uh, on the Jordy Colada show routinely uh, as he's uh, breaking down LSU baseball. Good stuff as always, man. We'll talk soon. All right, no problem. Wait a minute. Oh, Mincy, hang on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, did a bit mince on us. <laughs> uh, all right, there was Chris Reed tre- uh, checking in uh, daily. We, we are brought to you by Nevadas here on the Jordy Colada show. Remember, you can get in touch with Nevadas if you are looking for a uh, custom designed web uh, app, or if you're looking for a new website. Nevadas can help you out. They've got great experience over there as Randall Nachman and his crew uh, are in mobile app development, web app development. They can help you streamline a ton of the services that you have inside of the office, whether it's billing, uh, invoicing, anything that they can digitize for you. Uh, they can digitize any of the paperwork that they can, uh, that they can help you out with. Online at Nevadas.com. Nevadas.com is where you can find out more. Uh, We will close out the show next. When we come back, we'll be joined in studio by Peter Kuig, a Baton Rouge native that is now living over in uh, in the U.K. Uh, He is working with the Wycom Wanderers. Uh, Did I say that right? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. is next here on the Sin Studio. We know nothing. (laughs) (laughs) No, bro. No, I looked over at him. I said, that's Aries. No, bro. No, you you fuck that up, man. (laughs) I'll be back with Peter Kuig. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location.
Welcome back in to the uh, the Jordy Colada show. Just get up on that mic, bro. All right, we'll be good. Uh, we are joined here in studio. Uh, looking forward to this conversation as uh, we've got no idea what we're talking about on this side. We tried to introduce him as one of the executives from the Wycom Wanderers. He looked at us like we had three heads, bro. <laughs> he looked like he's still Wickham. insurance. That's yeah. our mulligan. Wickham, I mean, yes. You know, if you're going to mispronounce it, I would think it would be closer to Wickham. I mean, you're from the Wait, South. Bro, I know, I know. Uh, that is an embarrassing moment. Uh, that, <laughs> that is, is that up there with the, for sure. the Giacomo? The, yeah, that was bad. The, nah, the, yeah, the, no, the blame the English. Yeah. Um, well, they spelled it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they invented it. <laughs> Freaking UKers, bro. Uh, Peter Kuig is here. He is a Baton Rouge native. Um, and a, uh, if you're from Baton Rouge, odds are you know one Kuig. I grew up with Fitz and... Uh, <laughs> Uncle Pete was fun growing up around, bro. Uh, Fitzy's up in he's in Portland now. Uh, no, he's in Washington. Just Washington, Seattle, yes. Yeah. Uh, doing the doing God's work. Uh, <laughs> while you were over in the UK and you're running a soccer organization, yes. bro. Yeah. Um, first off, it is great to see you. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you for stopping by. Katie set this up, so shout out to uh, to our. Booking. Backbone here yes. uh, of the Last Jordy Colada show. You were reffing one of my kids in a basketball game. I was ah, yelling at you. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Did y'all win that day? Uh, Must have been the officiating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's me and Andy Piazza. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we probably yeah, did. Yeah, pricks. <laughs> Get them out of here. Uh, I have the over. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, Pete, how does this happen? How do you uh, how do you end up? Because I mean, like, uh, I, 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 you were you were Mister Baton Rouge growing up, man. I mean, a lot of people in this town really. I would have I would have put my money on that you would have been like the mayor or you would have had some successful company I'm running still young, man. within on. our state. But yeah. now you're over in 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 UK being very in, in in successful as as I thought you would be. But how do you get there? Well, uh, it's kind of a long crazy story, but I will cut it quick. Um, my uncle Rob, my dad's brother. Uh, brought the Zephyrs there to go. New we Orleans. Go. The American, as they call him over there. Uh, yeah, 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 we are the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Although we quick to uh, qualify that. We're from Louisiana. Yes. Anybody? <laughs> um, Probably makes them more in, nervous, dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, wait, where? So, <laughs> is that America? <laughs> exactly. Kind of. Yeah, I tell them sort of. <laughs> uh, so um, he, had always, he, had, he had done minor league baseball. Um, I worked with my dad for 20, 25 years. Uh, we invested in a lot of companies. Uh, about 10, 15 years ago, we started one, uh, grew it pretty quick, uh, ended up selling it in my mid 40s, and you know, kind of lived the dream of an Hell entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, at the time, uh, it was one of those situations where a business grew so rapidly. We had big financial partners, and every time we turned around, they wanted to buy more of the company. And um, Sounds very familiar. Early forties, I had the chance to uh, do a little midlife retirement, spend more time with my kids. They were, you know, young teenagers to seven years old at that point, and decided to be a Mr. Mom and coach a lot more and do all that stuff. And at the Yell same at the time, look at the next opportunity. And uh, one Thanksgiving, I was just sitting around with the whole, you know, everybody goes up to Dad's place, you know, sixty, seventy Kuhigs and extended Woo! family. It's a nice little party. Woo! 
Uh, Foggy in here, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that was my <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and uh, we were just sitting around watching proper football a little bit yes. and getting a little razzoo from uh, Uncle Rob because Uncle Rob is a baseball football guy. Uh, my dad was my coach growing up here, was Fitz's and Patrick's yeah. coach. Uh, we're a huge soccer family. We, we you know, it, it's our favorite game. And uh, one of the things that I was – doing everybody was asking you know my cousins what do you you know mid you retired in your early 40s everybody's asking you what the hell's next <laughs> and uh <laughs> i told them that i had been watching a lot of league two and league one <laughs> soccer matches in england because it was an interesting business opportunity and rob was like you know rob barely remembers this conversation but cut to the quick two years later rob Two or three years later, Rob calls me up and he says, "I found our, <laughs> I found our English football team." I'm like, "Wait, what?" And it, we, there were no conversations in between. And uh, one of the ways that I explained it to Rob was, you know, early in it, New Orleans Zephyrs won the AAA World Series, and so uh, the promotion relegation of the English pyramid is the most attractive thing from a business perspective because mm. if you go up, the revenues go up uh, a lot, and so. <clears throat> What I told Rob was, the year you guys won the AAA World Series, you would have been in Major League Baseball the next year. And he was like, wait, what? Right, right. Because he understood the model. that. Yeah. yeah, and he is real. I don't know if y'all remember Zephyr's games back sure, in the day. Absolutely. Boudreaux, Clotille. Absolutely. Uh, he is very into the entertainment Marketing. side yeah. of sports and knows that if you do those kinds of things, you can grow a, a, a fan base like they did with the Zephyrs. I mean, I think the first year they probably had 1,000 people per game. And then, you know, when he ended up, they were packing Zephyr Stadium out every night once that thing was built, and it was a lot of fun. And so um, he obviously got very interested. He goes over to England quite a bit with Missy. Uh, they love to vacation there. And, I, I you know, at, I think either the next trip or the next trip, he just emailed a bunch of dudes over in, in England that were football consultants uh, and – started meeting with people um and and, asking her yeah and so eventually came up with a deal um for a club called yeovil uh which is in sort of cider country way out in the middle of nowhere uh that was in league two um and he literally said i found our football club i was like what the hell are you talking about he said yeovil i was like and he said i need you to do a due diligence mission and i was on a plane two days later uh, wow. basically checking the tenets of the deal. Love and stories like that. Uh, that deal fell apart. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> uh, it, it did. Um, Never mind. You know, uh, sometimes due diligence, you find out things that, yeah. are, you know, you get the, to the concrete truth of what a business transaction is. And so we weren't able to do that deal, but it had leaked out in the press. And so it was kind of perfect timing for the summer. There's only a two-month break between seasons in England. And uh, I, about five or six different clubs called Rob uh, because they knew we were interested in investing in, in English football, and one of them was Wickham. Wow. Coach Mark Schlesinger, who is the head basketball coach for the UNO Privateers, writes inside of the bunker, Kuig has done some amazing stuff over there. He has a fan in New Orleans. Uh, we got from, lots of fans uh, in New coach Orleans. Less, I bet. Um, so... You saw that as a business uh, opportunity. Now that you're in it, what has it what, what, what has it been like? Has it has it been everything that you thought it was? Uh, yeah, um, it is uh, absolutely crazy. Uh, it is the only thing I can equate it to is at, at one point we were involved in in Tipitina's, uh, and this is like having a massive entertainment venue it's a small business with a massive entertainment venue and basically you have uh, a business side which has got to run everything and then you have the football side and at Wickham we have uh, we're going to have upwards of 36 players under contract for this next year because we've we not only have a first team squad but we've envelop, we've developed over the, let, the couple of last couple of years a development squad that feeds into that whereas when we arrived Wickham was one of the smallest budgets in league one um, which is the third tier of English football. Uh, and we bumped it up a little bit that year uh, and made kind of an amazing run to get promoted to the championship, which is the fifth biggest uh, foot soccer league in the world. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Steve Phelps is listening in the U.K. and says good morning. 
to Peter <laughs> from uh, from the UK. Good old English he's, breakfast. Uh, he's listening. Uh, he's listening in uh, over there. So tell me about. Um, compare it to SEC football as far as the passion goes. You know, goes. Uh, that's kind of one of the things that I was thinking about because I had no idea what we would talk about. Um, but but really, English so- uh, soccer. I call it soccer on this side of the pond. If I call it that over there, my boys make fun of me, but I don't care. They invented the word. So, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> it, it To me, it, it's definitely similar to the way that – so you've got the NFL up here, which is massive. You've got the SEC here, which is – arguably just as big, Mm -hmm. but only in certain uh, uh, states. And so if you think about professional football as it mixes with the NFL, as it mixes with sort of that those top level high school f- football teams that we all know and love. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, it is League One champion championship is to the Premier League as the SEC is to uh, the NFL and how much is ga- there's there's a casino in every corner right in UK how much does that oh man there's yeah you can they, the they gambling, all bet on their phones yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, there's a huge gambling culture uh, around the English game worldwide um, yeah that's a pretty big component yeah. so excuse my ignorance on this but explain to me what I have been witnessing from this American sports fan point of view to the outrage of premier soccer in the UK. I'm going back to the experience that I witnessed with the Glazers team of, of what was happening there. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, relegation to see if you could explain that to the American sports fan because it seems like uh, from the 30,000 square foot view, uh, or th- from the 30,000 foot view that it is, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, you know, it just. It, I mean, imagine if there was promotion and relegation I'm in American t- sports. You I, would I, never see any tanking whatsoever. That's what I'm, I mean, these dudes play until the very last whistle of the very last game, match. Yeah. And, it's, and, uh, it's promotion relegation is, uh, look, we've been on both sides of it. Last year, you know, we got promoted. This year we were in the championship, and we had probably – uh, no one will ever – we're a smaller club, and we were going into COVID, so we were very protective of the fact that – we, what we wanted to do was financially survive this year. And so we went into the championship, and we're playing against teams that spend mm-hmm. $100 million on players. Cool. Uh, and our budget on players this year was pro- probably ended up being around $6 million. You know, the next lowest was probably 9 or 10 and there were probably, you know, there were probably only a couple of clubs under 15. And y'all were in the championship. Yes. Wow. And so uh, promotion relegation is, is, uh, is the magic. You know, you've got 20 teams in the Premier League. Uh, the bottom three fall out every year, uh, which means that the top three teams in the championship go up. And you're talking about a difference, like the, the, probably the most important match game in any sport whatsoever is the playoff final for the championship. And it's, uh, and, and there's a, there's basically, so two teams get automatically promoted out of the championship this year. And then it's a, and then the next four, in a a playoffs, man, it is a semifinal and then a final and you play home and away semifinals. And then the winners meet at Wembley. And we, last year we ended up, so league one, we ended up in one of those playoff spots and, and we played Fleetwood. Um, you know, won the tie and got to go to Wembley and uh, played one of our biggest rivals, uh, Oxford United, and ended up pulling a miracle. I mean, we were, uh, you know, Leicester won the Premier League a few years back. Uh, That was one of the biggest surprises of all time. Um, A lot of people sort of put what we did last year in League One going into the championship in sort of the same realm. We were picked by every single Jordy Collada in England. Pund- yeah, there we go. There we go. I figured with that here, you knew something. Like that. <laughs> I doubt. Uh, um, it, uh, it was um, against all odds. Yeah. Uh, it really was. And so it was pretty amazing um, ride last year. But we had to very quickly, there's only two months under normal circumstances, we had to very quickly get ready for competing in one of the toughest leagues in the world. What is what is free agent? What is recruiting like for 
for a soccer club? Is it's, it, it, it's crazy. I bet. Um, there are two windows where you can uh, sell players, buy players, sign free agents. Uh, one takes place January in the middle of the season, and the other one is basically right now, although technically uh, the, the, the transfer window begins um, July 1. What's that? Uh, I'm sorry. What's that transition like going from whenever you get, whenever you make that step up in competition? Is it very much? I don't know if we're, if we can even compete in this league. Like we're happy to be here and then get relegated again, or it's like you feel like you're ready for that step up in competition. No, that that's the thing about Wickham. Um, we are kind of one of the ultimate underdogs in all of English football. Uh, the club was one of the top amateur clubs for a hundred years. It's been around since 1887. Eight, <laughs> although they, <laughs> there's a little bit of argument whether it's 1884 or 1887. Uh-huh, I love this type of argument. <laughs> that sounds like a pub argument for yeah, sure. How many beers? Remember, that prick <laughs> thinks they started in '87. Get that American out of here, dumbass. Hey, look, mate. Yeah, right. History's important. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it was one of the clubs that was – and so over time, professional soccer, <laughs> professional football over there, it just – it, it – um, they spent 100 years in the amateur leagues, and finally I think there was a decision where you had to be a professional club to enter some of the, some of the competitions, like the FA Cup and the League Cup, which are so important to – uh, supporters of every different level of football. It's one of the most amazing things to me is that you can have teams from the sure. very lowest plan uh, at Premier League teams, and, and those cups are really amazing things mm-hmm. to participate in and to watch. And so um, it's uh, we've always competed. When we were on, the, the club was forced into uh, professional football. Um, very quickly, uh, under a very legendary uh, manager named Martin O'Neill, uh, made it into the league and, and really almost against – they made it to the semifinals of the FA Cup. Uh, the, this club had made – Martin made it to League, uh, league One for the, first, for the first time ever. And, and so it, it, it's always sort of competed with lower resources against much bigger clubs and always done very well. And so last, last year, uh, you know, we have a crazy manager. Uh, Gareth Ainsworth turned out to be one of my best dudes I've ever met in my life. He would definitely fit in with uh, the crew down in South Louisiana. <laughs> I can promise you. Uh, he can't wait to get here. Uh, um, but uh, we, mo- a lot of clubs would have just blown their wad and spent a shitload of money on replacing the players that got them there with players that get it, maybe supposedly gave them a better chance right. of competing in the championship. We made the decision that we would add components around the players that, that, that got us there um, because we knew even with a 5 to $6 million budget, uh, pounds actually, you know, depending on. Which that equate to the U.S. dollar? Seven, eight, probably. <laughs> you know, um, depending on the day, depending on the news. Day trader. You know, yeah. Uh, depending on where Bitcoin is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it was. We had some very, and we all. I mean, there's no other way to put it. We had the balls to do it. Um, we knew that that our boys could compete at that level. Uh, we obviously needed to add a few people. You know, there were bigger squad sizes. We do, we actually started the development squad last year, um, and it was a rough transition. Uh, a lot of our we played so late in the season. This you know the the playoffs are July thirteenth. We started the season I think first week of September, and everybody had to have vacations in between. They were you know you had to get players off a certain amount of days, and so we had a very truncated uh, preseason. Um, we lost a lot of matches at the beginning of the year. Uh, we had a lot of injuries. A couple of the guys that we signed during last window that we knew could help us uh, weren't paying out injury yet. bugs. Yeah. And that, yeah, so we had two guys, Uchi Ikpiazu and Ryan Tafazoli, that we had brought in um, that really didn't play many games until the second half of the year. Um, second half of the year, so we were struggling at the beginning, but it kind of turned around. Uh, the boys kept, uh, you know, and uh, everybody talks about our changing room and the spirit of our of our team, and it is what holds us together. And uh, you know, n- at no point was anybody br- breaking, uh, and it would have broken a lot of football clubs in in England because um, we do have a special changing room. Uh, and so they held it together. Second half of the year, we were probably one of the top 10, 12 teams in the league as far as points go. 
And, you know, over the year, uh, you know, one of the things they say about promoted clubs is that the refs don't give you the right, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time for them to get used to, sure. whatever. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to get the calls. We didn't. Um, and so it was the ball didn't bounce our way. Sure. Uh, we were tested, you know, and it started to turn, you know, kind of around the end of the fall. We won a few games. Uh, you know, we drew Tottenham Hotspurs in the FA Cup final, uh, in the FA Cup um, third round, uh, and, and had a home match against Harry Kane and, you know, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And we took it to him for 86 minutes. And, and uh, you know, the, Harry Kane finally turned it on. They scored a couple of goals, and we were and out Harry of the Kane FA went Cup. Harry Kane? <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, and, and, but we finished fantastically. You know, we, we won a lot of huge, big matches at massive, at massive stadiums. The last match that we won, you, you know, we, we beat Middlesbrough 3 0 at, at their place. Uh, uh, two weeks later, England, the English national team was playing a match there. Wow. Uh, in preparation for the Euros. Um, we, we really, um, we gave it our all. We finished one point behind Derby County. We finished on 43 points. We finished 22nd out of 24 teams. And so, uh, well, and so that, that many teams go down. So we technically, uh, well, it's not over yet. Um, Derby County is kind of an interesting situation. Uh, their, their manager is Wayne Rooney. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. MLS um, superstar. <laughs> England super. I mean, one of the world's greatest players of all time. Um, and so they finished one point ahead of us. But over the last three years, uh, they have gotten in a lot of trouble with re regarding the rules. And so um, there is a little bit of time. And they were, you know, they, they recently the EFO won an appeal against them. And uh, if there is... So there, there, there will be a point deduction for Darby County. Whether it's this year, whether it's next year, is still to be decided. Um, but it's... But your fate's still very much up in the air. It is a little bit, yes. And so we only finished one point. So if the, if the, if the, if the committee levies any kind of point penalty and, and puts it on them this year, uh, we would stay up. Um, and, it's, and there's some precedents in, over history that... Uh, when you're found uh, not following the rules, that you can be relegated. And wow. so um, there's a little bit of hope. Uh, Why don't you just play for it, dude? Let's just roll the ball out, y'all two. Go, go, go play 90 minutes for, for a spot in the, where you want to be. Um, we did, twice. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to do that again. again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Somebody else decide on this. Uh, how cool is this for your family? It's been a great experience for me, and it was a phenomenal experience for the family through the beginning of COVID. Ah. Um, you know, one of the greatest experiences we've ever had is the whole family came over Christmas that first year, uh, went to matches. We went to, you know, we did the whole England thing, and, you know, I had my, my kids there. Today's my, my Max birthday. It's nice. 15th birthday. 15th. Shout out, Max. Happy, yeah, yeah. And so my dad came, my brother came, Fitz was over there with his kid, his wife and, and kid, uh, Rob and Missy were over there, and we just had a blast. Um, and then COVID shut it down. And I have been locked down over there because of the quarantine issues. We have a very, we're uh, one of the smaller, we are the smallest club in the championship. And so we have a very thin staff. We furloughed everybody. So there was basically four, five people running the club through COVID. And so it made it very difficult for me to come back and have to deal with a quarantine. I probably, I think I made it back between, you know, for 18 months, I was probably home twice. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was not easy. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for that. Thank God for my wife, who is the greatest partner on the planet. Uh, my boys are busy. They both play soccer. They play basketball. Uh, she has really been a trooper through this. She's gotten a lot of help from friends and family. So yeah. it, it hasn't been bad, but I've been back about a month, and it's been nice. Well, um, man, this is cool to have you back. What's it, what, what, I guess what's it like being back home? What, what, was, what was it like coming back here? Man, I miss freedom. 
Yeah. <laughs> Anybody uh, that ever, you know, I, I, there's plenty to complain about in the government. I don't care which side you're on. Anytime you want to uh, realize that the United States is probably the, one of the better places to live, I just highly recommend going to another place. And right. think coming back. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do really love living in, uh, we, I'm just outside of, of London. You know, I can, during normal times, I could get a stand up off of my couch and I'd be at Marlebon Station in the middle of London in 27 minutes. Wow. Um, it is a lot of fun. I do love the pub culture. You know, the fact that these guys have a restaurant pub in every neighborhood uh, is an amazing thing that where people hang out together a whole lot more, whereas, you know, we've got these neighborhoods spread all over the place and you know, I guess for the first couple of hundred years when nobody cared about drinking and driving, that was okay. But now, you know, makes it a little bit more difficult. Sure. Uh, and so it, it, it's, it's almost like I do love the third space element of English culture, which are these very tight towns uh, that have central meeting points. A lot of times it's like I play Sunday League football over there. We actually have right off of the corner of the pitch a bar. And so, uh, you know, this is, it's crazy. You know, it's, you got a bunch of old guys, you know, I do play with, a, 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 I'm 49 years old, but most of the, my teammates are like in their 20s and 30s. But Sunday afternoon, you know, Sunday afternoon, Sunday mornings will be out there. And there's hundreds of people there just because it's, it's what Something to watch. That little town Elaine in loves to do. Um, and then after, there's a nice little party, especially when we went. Yeah. Um, I saw a bunch of pictures of them. They got the whole tent up for the England match the, over the weekend, which they were excited about. These people are crazy, man. Yeah. yeah you know, no, one of the kids on the England national team cuts his hair exactly like Paul Gascoigne did in 1996. Next thing you know, you got 30-something-year-old knuckleheads in England, <laughs> like my boys <laughs> Wazy yeah, yeah, yeah. and Tom, it's who like have Odell cut their hair exactly the same way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's like showing up to a meeting and some guy's got Odell Beckham cut. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, welcome home, man. It's great, to, it's great to have you home. Cheers, Jordy. Thank you. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for the time. Thank you for coming by and sharing that with us. Peter Kuig, uh, who is uh, over in uh, Wickham, running the uh, – the, I brought uh, the y'all soccer. some kits. Nice. Oh, let's go, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one, of the, the, one of the ways that I knew the wor- – Rob always talks about the World Wide Wickham thing is uh, one of the ways I figured out that it, we were sort of making it over here is that – you know, they mentioned us on Tiger it. Drop. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> see, there you go. There you go. Nice, Look, dude. Especially this. one. We had to bring the Louisiana influence. Oh, wow. Oh, Look at that, dude. Yes, dude. Look at that. That's actually one of our keepers' kits. What a wild roll. From the, that's from the FA Cup match. Damn, this bed specialist. That that's what they called me in high school. Is that what? I see double, triple entendres on that one. And that's our home kit. Brought those, a few different sizes for y'all. Love that. Pete, Rock, we're you. a rock and roll club, dude, so we got a record label as one of our sponsors. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. How long are you in town for? When do you go um, back? Um <laughs> I heard Boris just extended lockdown, so I may uh yeah, put it might. off a little bit. <laughs> um no, I'm uh scheduled to go back for a few weeks in this July. I gotta come nice. back for a week and then it's probably gonna be pretty heavy over the next few months over how, there. How much has like the Ted Lasso effect like, like kind of played a part in what you're doing here and getting America <laughs> involved? Because I feel like you have like that's the vibe of the team. Well, first of all, it's the best show of the last year. Uh, I don't. I mean, I'm a little biased because best I, acceptance speech of all time. I think they stole a couple of episodes from us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what it seems like. Uh, but I will. I will say this: it's a, it's a phenomenal show. It's hysterical. I think uh, it's like anything else. It's been a slow roll for soccer in the United States. It's been mm-hmm. a huge sport for 30 years. Uh, we compete at the highest levels. We're very good at it. Uh, but U.S. has four major sports. It's a massive yeah. landscape. You've got cool games like lacrosse, Ryzen. Um, soccer is always going to be massive in this country. Uh, things like Ted Lasso get a little bit further. Uh, I wish everybody had Apple Plus so they could watch it. Oh, dude, I'll give you a website. Don't worry, worry about <laughs> oh, they it. They did get relegated. <laughs> they got relegated. They got the relegated the last yeah. And so te- uh, technically, I can't wait to see the second season because technically Wickham and Richmond were in the same division. Wow. So I was a little Did disappointed not out? to get a call yeah. <laughs> for, you know, filming. That's at, right. In the room, dude. Yeah. Um, I think it would have been a great episode because, but I, I, they may be a little afraid to contact us because I think they've stolen a couple of episodes from uh, our story. Yeah, while we have you on the phone, we wanted to talk about episode three. 
Uh, do we get our cut? Do we well, send the royalty? That, like, <laughs> they, they mean, do it, that's our that? play. <laughs> yeah, the voodoo episode was the one that would, you know, when they did that, uh, they were definitely stealing one of my tricks of the trade. Petey, it's great to see you, bro. Yeah, my man. Welcome home, man. Peter Kuig, good conversation. Unreal. Good stuff. Thank you, Katie, for setting that up. Uh, we are back with you tomorrow. Remember, check out Go Chevrolet online at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Enjoy your Tuesday.